That was a cheap one. I guess I think that was All right. Uh, okay, I'd like to uh, uh, to call this meeting to order uh, the agenda of the uh, sorry the committee of the whole community development meeting on May first, uh, twenty twenty three, six thirty p.m. Um, I need an approval of the agenda. Looking for a mover, uh, moved by Councillor Wadi Slale and seconded by uh, Councillor John Martel. Uh, all right, all in favor? Okay, excellent. Um, okay, uh, for disclosure of pecuniary interests and the general nature thereof, do I have anybody who has any pecuniary interest? Oh, Kim? Um, okay. I'm a founding member of the Seaway Horticultural Society, and that is part of the group that will present, be presenting at our delegation center presentation with uh, Mr. Nathan um, McElveen and Mr. Paul Whitney. Okay, thank you. And so at that time, you'll step away from the table. All right, thank you very much. That's not voted. Um, okay, uh, question number four, or item number four, pardon me. Uh, business arising from previous committee meeting minutes. Uh, is there any um, anything from the previous minutes that we want to talk about? Anybody? Spare it and call on the side. Sure, no problem. Yeah. Have notes made for them. Yeah. Oh, good here. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, well, with that, um, then uh, we can we can jump into uh, delegations and presentations. Um, uh, so uh, the first one, uh, Mrs. I mean, Ms. Jane Hess, uh, for his community impact officer from the way of Leeds and Grantville. Uh, you can stand back there if you want or wherever. You don't need to be on camera, but it's your choice. Great. Anyway, thank you for uh, listening to me tonight. And uh, I'm going to be here for uh, everyone in the municipality with the election, et cetera. So it's great to finally get in front of you to present what we're doing tonight away. Um, and as you mentioned, my name is Jane Hess. Um, I'm just going to give a little background. I was a public health nurse and director of nurse aid, chief nursing officer at the Lake Trail Alliance Health Unit for a long time. I was there for 30 years. I wasn't in those positions for all that time. And so um, now I'm working for United Way. And uh, I've left a PowerPoint presentation um, that's, that's up there. It's in PDF form, but like, how well is it with the AX? It will. Yeah, so it doesn't do really as well as PDF form, but it can help them show up in the. Uh, in the PowerPoint form. But what the United Way is looking at is the million um, dollars a year the United Way uh, in Leeds Grenville raises that we fund many programs uh, in all of the municipalities. It's looking at a way uh, to use that money in a different way so that we can have a more meaningful impact, maybe over the longer term. And where this connects well with my job as a health unit, because I was involved with health equity and social determinants of health is that now in any way, well, it's always funded programs that support that, girls, aid, uh, big brothers, big sisters, seniors programs, et cetera, is now being used in the language of health equity and social determinants of health. And I've done a lot of uh, consultations because I've been hired as a community impact officer to do a community conversation project. And the way I described health equity to a group of kids at Singers in Brockville was, you know, I said, do you know what health equity is? And they said, equal, but I said, no. Equal would be you get a half a donut and you get a half a donut. Equity is that you get three quarters and you get a quarter to eat. So it's that kind of thing and how we're looking at how we use the money for United Way. We're using the collective impact framework and there is in your package a logic model with the collective impact framework. Looking at the components that, that create that collective impact in the community. Common agenda, we're all looking towards the same outcome. Shared measurement, so that we're all measuring the same thing. And I'm sure many of you in your regular job or your business um, know that you have to report to certain governments or certain people, and these are the things you report. And those numbers don't always match the numbers of the other person you're working with in the other ministry. So when we talk about shared measurement, we're thinking, okay, what could we choose as uh, in Lee Grenville that we could all work with? Yeah, we still have to do all the reporting because we don't really have to do that. But what could we all be working toward that we all say, when we got there, yes, we got there, kind of thing. And that's what shared measurement is. Um, mutually reinforcing activities. So a lot of the things that would be funded would be building on one another to support us towards those common goals or those shared measurements. 
and uh, uh, continuous communication. So everyone knows what's going on all the time. Because I'm in the urban community, and somebody said, so and so is doing this program. They're doing that program. I know that so and so is doing this program. And so, how that and sometimes I'm sure in this whole town site, you've heard of that, that somebody's doing something, somebody else said, great idea, starts it up again, and they're working either against each other or they're both doing the same thing going forward. So, it's to try to get that continuous communication so we can all have that common agenda and working on the shared goal. And so, what the United Way proposes in this, because they're paying me exclusively to do this, I'm not fundraising with the United Way, so I'm not off the side of my desk as the person who's already working with the United Way, is that we will provide the backbone for whatever project we look at working on in New Greenville. That could be a project that would be something for all of these Greenville. There's a program in Windsor Essex called Cradle to Career Prosper Us, where they have the privilege, if you call it that, not. Uh, of having the highest child poverty rates in Canada. So they picked three neighborhoods, two in Windsor, one in Leamington, and embedded programs for grades six, seven, and eight with the common outcome of high school graduation and college entrance. So we're not talking about a project that's going to be a year in the making. We're talking about something that could be five or ten in the making to see if they can change the trajectory of those families in the Melbourne Jurassic. I'm not saying that's what we would choose here. But that's an example of how United Way has flipped the focus from fundraising to community development with fundraising to support it. And that's kind of where we're going. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, so I've been out talking. You can have a look at all of the meetings that I've had throughout these in Granville. Uh, I'm here Wednesday with Edinburgh Cardinal Prescott and um, Augusta at a community conversation that we invited people to. We had six people um, that came to that meeting. Um, so the, the ones that we've invited people to have been very, have had very degrees of success. We have 25 in uh, Westport, but uh, Robin Jones tied that to her mayor's breakfast. Uh, we had 15 in Dan and Ottawa. That just is the people in Dan that chose to come. No one kind of in, uh, did any more inviting than we did through the United Way. We had a couple where no one showed up. But we have a very successful in existing groups like Stingers, like Team Men at the Wild, where there were like 150 kids the other night. So we probably talked to about 50 or 75 kids. So when we tried to get all age groups to say, what are the strengths, what are the challenges, and what do you want for the future of your community? And so we're going to pull that together in a report, which will probably be available to the municipalities and the general population in uh, September. And then think about when we do our our fundraising for United Way, and we put out our, our piece for future future projects. What will that look like? And might it might not be you know ten or fifteen little projects that might be something bigger. Also, if there's something local that's a real need in a community, we can support a community champion in say Edwardsburg Cardinal that wants to move forward with a stop project. When I was in Elgin on Friday, there was a group of people there that wanted to have almost like an Earth Day committee all the time. And so when you think about it, environmentalists um, support kids and youth and, and you know, looking after the community, all those positive things that you could fit into United Way pillars, and we could support a champion in an elegant who wanted to do some local fundraising because we could support them with uh, text receipts and those kinds of things. Because some of those organizations don't have charitable status. So those are some of the kinds of things that we're talking about. Um, we did do a survey in the fall, and Edward for Cardinal, amazing, of 287 surveys that went out or came back, um, we had 89 from Edward for Cardinal. So we must have had a champion, and Edward for Cardinal said, fill the survey, fill the survey, or somebody filled it in 89 times. <laughs> and we asked again in that, what are, the, what are your strengths, what are your challenges, and what came back for Edwards for Cardinal, the three top challenges in order were housing, mental health, food insecurity, and the strengths were caring, caring and unified community, quiet, safe, with lots of recreational opportunities. Um, and they thought the priority challenge was housing. So, uh, you know, a million dollars at United Way raises for these in Grand Development annually isn't going to attack housing, mental health, and food insecurity. But are there some things that underlie those? 
that we could maybe work on over the long term in order to make change in any community. Uh, one example I use is that the fluoride uh, barn program at the health unit, where we put fluoride barns on poverty, saves one dollar on that, saves seven dollars by the age of five if they go eat a general anesthetic and their teeth removed because they're rotten. So you know, so there are lots of things that are, are short-term gains like that, but what we're looking at is a little bit more long-term. But it's that concept of investing early to save money later. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention tonight, I think I'm just about to finish my 10 minutes. Is you that three minutes left. You got lots of time still. Is that I'm on the uh, uh, Everything in Our Community Coalition of Child and Youth Serving Providers of Youth Grenville. And we want asset building. So it's a, a thing we put in place. We kind of missed a couple of years because of COVID. But um, people in your community, they can be in a work position, a volunteer position, who do something great to support children and youth. One year it was the McDonald's and Prescott. One year it was that, uh, I don't know whether it was in the law of laws, but the older the old known girls was in Brockville. They were nominated because the cafeterias were so friendly to the students at St. Mary. So it can be anybody, anywhere. And I left these on the back counter. If you can think of people, we've extended the deadline to the 10th of May so that we get people recognized. Okay. Any questions? I'm sure there will be some. Uh, all right, maybe I'll start with you. Yeah, Kim, do you have anything in detail? Um, well, I was just looking at um, um, examples of things that you've done, the public health assessment and surveillance reports. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, they're on the, the East Coast Wire District Health Unit website oh. under your reports, and they do a number of different reports. Now, they haven't done as many through COVID because all the reporting we did through the last three or four years is COVID related. Right. But they have one on uh, uh, teen, uh, uh, teen pregnancies, they've got one on uh, people using fruit, these fruits and vegetables. So there's a whole lot of reports that are there. That can influence when I talk about the data that we use to look at all of these trends, well, that's a piece of the data. The Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan that was done by um, Robin Jones and uh, Nancy Peckford mm -hmm. uh, in the last year. That will be data that will be used as we how we look at that. ACES, we presented that to County's uh, uh, Great Services at County's one time, and ACES is the Adverse Childhood Experience Survey. So looking at those things that happen in homes in our communities that have an impact on kids. So that will be considered. And then this year they're really going they're going to redo the early development instrument that's done through the municipality through the, the counties through the early years. And that looked at uh, different areas of development in kids in the in kindergarten. And so we're going to do that. And so we'll have new updated data for that. And then also this year, they're going to redo the grade three, six, and nine testing. So those are, you know, those give us, you know, generic population based data on what's happening in our community. And, and have you ever done a survey finding out um, the amount of, of people who actually have a family doctor or lack of family doctors in the community and how that's impacted the health and well being? Uh, I don't know if we've ever done a survey. I don't know if health unit has done a survey. That would be something the interior health team would have as data because they're working on the primary care focus. So they may not be friendly family health team, but that's certainly an issue. And when I did a lot of conversations, particularly with young families, in Brockville, I did nine or 10 months at the library with babies. Of the nine that were their own parents, I think eight of those were new to Brockville in the last year. And primary, and primary care physician or nurse practitioner was their top problem, as well as sleep at daycare. So demographically, I've tried to get all groups of my conversations. The one I've missed is parents of kids in that 7 to 11, 7 to 12 range. So we try to figure out how to access some of those. They're very busy people. I saw lots of them going into the arena that were incredible when we're doing a conversation there with the talking yeah. cat. <laughs> so, yeah, we didn't have time to talk to me. So, we're going to look at that as well. But, yes, that, that's it. That was a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thank and I told these moms, you know, keep your family doctor as well, go and sound the under day, and then go to the health unit and get your child to the United States. And you can get them there with better family physicians. So they're maintaining their family physicians Absolutely. from where they're coming from because there isn't enough here. Yeah, it's you know, better to have one virtually yeah. than not one at not all. That, and that's that's not my you know nurse health unit opinion. That's my personal opinion. 
each thing on the ones that we don't have. Yeah. We get up each other. And that's the problem with the, the, uh, this is the inherent government issue. That's a problem with the interior government because in order to get a new position, you have to give up the one you got on your website. And that's that's an issue. Is there any info that was anybody in the provincial government? <laughs> well, <laughs> 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 you Okay. Okay, and I just have one comment. Uh, um, I was going to actually, well, the short came after the question, I was going to ask you uh, about housing. Okay. And I think housing should be on the top of everybody's agenda right now. I don't know if you want I've been watching the news lately what's been happening down east where uh, families have been put up in, in uh, motels, hotels uh, by, the, by the province and now the hotel keepers are going to evict them all, yeah. some by the 10th of May and some by the end of June and no place for them to go at all. So I was going to suggest you talk to the counties, but when you were talking to Kim, you said you've already been talking to the counties because the counties are the ones that handle the housing and even rental. And from everything that I've seen on the town on the television lately, the counties have got a whack of money for housing this year. Um, I don't know if you guys all watch the news, but uh, uh, Ottawa got a big cut in their funding, but the United Counties got a big increase in their funding. So you might want to just try to get a, get a try to get another audience with the. I have to look at the policy and you know, certainly housing does come up. Housing comes up on the economic development issue too. When I talk to AP, mm -hmm. 600 jobs in the yeah. they can't fill because people can't move mm -hmm. here. Housing. And so, you know, so it's, a, it's an issue on so many fronts. Um, uh, housing for people who are, are homeless or need support in housing is an issue too, because you can't just put them into an apartment. All of a sudden, everything's beautiful. They need those supports. And back to the COVID, when we have that. Um, Isolation place at the motel on, on Kent Boulevard. You know, there were things in it that people didn't like, and people kind of like say negative things about it. But there were a lot of people there that are under house that were supported because there was somebody around almost 24 7 to help them in their challenges and their needs. And so, you know, and so there's a whole lot of issues around housing, and some of it's related to homelessness and then the challenges that go along with mental health and addictions and how to help people live. Together in the supports they need, and then just the physical stuff. But there's 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 a multi headed hydra for sure. Yes, and the, and the township uh, can also be a, of a help for the housing issues too, because people have to have lots to build on, and the township is the one who kind of can create those lots in the town. And and you are, all of you are counselors. I'm not a counselor. No, that's no, that, that is part of the purview of that. But you see about people living in hotels and motels, though. Like 20 years ago, we were visiting people living in motels yeah. because not necessarily in this jurisdiction, but in other jurisdictions, because that was the only house that they could get. You know, like, so we can visit these agents in hotels. You know, that's kind of thing. Thanks. I don't. I just just wanted to say thanks, Mrs. for for your presentation. It's you know great to uh, to hear the work and and understand the role you know for you as the community impact officer. Um, I don't really have any questions. I know a lot of what we're discussing is is probably at a different level of government um, than we, than the one we're sitting at. But it's great that that we're here to hear. You know the work the United Way does, so that you know, when there is an ask, that, that you know we understand the ask and we need to explore our place. Yeah. And fundraising will change over time, or has changed. Yeah, for sure. And part of the reason we did this now is because is it, is it different because of COVID? We're not through COVID. We're you know it's not done. We're through. We're working through. And definitely, it's a different time, and there there are many more challenges even now than there were prior to COVID. Yeah, absolutely. There is. It exposed it exposed a lot of our weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Yeah, I just have one. Not a question. You said that we had three issues here according to our survey. Yeah. We had people that it was for housing, mental health, and what was the third one? Uh, food insecurity. Sorry? Food insecurity. 
food insecurity. Okay. And, and so food insecurity is the language we kind of like at public health in the United Way uh, because it isn't just putting food in people's mouths or helping them figure out how to grow it, sustain it. To, you know, there's many variables to, to food security, and it isn't just putting money food in food banks that people will get. You know, teaching people how to cook. My daughter's a public health nurse in Peterborough. She visited a girl the other day, a new mother, and he has had no food on her. And she had no way to make baby food for this, you know, I think it was 18 months, but we were still all only on the bottom kind of thing. So, you know, just some of those kinds of things, depending on the kind of so yeah. food security is a big topic. Like interesting. That. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayo. Thanks, Mr. Mayo. Good presentation. Thank you. I, I guess all I had is, is uh, you know, I, I like the idea of you acting as, as uh, for lack of a better way to say it, as a project manager for some of these initiatives. I think that's a great approach because, you know, so many times we see it in government. I see it at work all the time as well, where, uh, you know, everybody seems to be trying to do the same goals and, and marching in different directions and, and uh, not they're not uh, being cohesive about it. Mm -hmm. And I've been involved in finding, like, we need to get the um, super criminal court uh, funds. Yep. Uh, you know, that's every state in our community. And one time we had people apply, we had two same applications from our framework. They didn't really know the other one was there doing the same thing. So, yeah, it's very hard to say, kind of, hey, have you talked to each other? I mean, you're kind of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're doing and going to do. And the other thing we're trying to work really hard at is we do lots of study studies and surveys and reports, and they don't go anywhere. And we're going to make sure this works. Studies and studies. Don't studies and reports don't go anywhere, you're saying? That's the kind of thing to do, though. They go on a shelf and there's no actual action. Oh, hey, I agree with you. Um, <laughs> you're, 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 uh, I have, I do agree. <laughs> <laughs> I will live that for coming here. Yeah. So we're going to try and make that as we go. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm funding, you know, three days a week, six months at a time. So you never know when somebody will say, okay, you want that job. But it, it, it does make sense to be doing this job. So it's, Sounds good. And then, like I said, hopefully you can get the word out. And if you do learn the secret, let us know too, because we could really uh, use some uh, some good advice on that in some cases. Like this was the yeah. the County Council of Joint Services when they presented the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan. This was the previous councils. And they wanted to hire a need to help put the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan into, into action. Because that's another report that I think individual municipalities are taking forward. I mean, Mark Fancy's working on the front of, front of young women. But that's one that you know needs some action. So hopefully through this we can action it as well. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night, Jane. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, all right. So uh, with that one concluded, it seems like we had some good questions that lead into the next one, actually. Uh, so I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. David McLevine and Mr. Paul Whitney. Um, we're here to talk about um, a request for community and kind support for a community garden at uh, 2140 Dundas. So that's not something security I'll say this. I thought you might. Okay. I'm here speaking on behalf of a delegation made up of the Presbyterian Church in New York, of which I am a trustee for them. But we're also still the owners of 2140 Dundas. That has not been finalized yet. Uh, also speaking on behalf of the African Broad Sunny Company, represented by Paul Whitney, and uh, the Seaway and probably the Horticultural Society. Um, and our aim is to create a community garden on the southwest property corner of 2140 Dundas, known as St. Andrews and St. James Presbyterian Church. Um, we're here this evening to ask for the support and participation of Nelson uh, to, to help us get going with this or continue on with this. Um, food and security is a major, major issue. And it's not going away anytime soon. Uh, food banks have seen an increase in their usage by upwards of 60%. Uh, 
uh, they're projecting that 20% of the population of Canada this year will be making use of that food banks. And when you start bringing that down to the local level, that means of the 7,000 people in that first or 1,400 people will be making use of food banks. Now, we're not naive enough to believe that one community garden will solve everybody's problems for the course of the year. It won't. However, as was alluded to, uh, by teaching people how to grow, how to grow, how to preserve, and with the produce going to the food bank, you can take a big step towards helping people where we can, when we can. And I think that that's the important thing. Um, so what we are hoping is that council would be willing to provide some, well, I'd say possible, but certainly dirt to level out that southwest corner of the property and get it smoothed out. And then once the boxes are in place, uh, wood chips go down between the boxes to act as a mulch to keep things from growing up and it would eventually break down. Uh, that's compost. So that's what we're here for today. Uh, I don't know that there would be much more that I have to say about this slide. Um, and so I don't know, are there any questions? Yes, thank you very much. Um, all right. Councilor Martel, do you have any? Uh... Okay. I just have a couple questions. Uh, sure. You said you're going to try to teach people how to plant and grow. So how are you going to do you want to post that at the food banks to help? Like how do you have it's, to come there to your site to, it, for days? It's a combination. I mean, there are people that are definitely interested in gardening and they know how to do it. So we've got the expertise. We've got people who don't know the first thing about growing. Um, last year in your flock at River Reef Presbyterian Church, we started a community garden with the lion's plant. And phenomenally, we got 15 boxes placed in Fort Ray. And with that, we were able to provide 350 pounds worth of food to the food bank. We had some help from the high school students at Seawick. And one of the students, when she held the bee seeds in her hand, she commented, These are so unruly. And my thought was, you haven't seen parents yeah. <laughs> so there is a lack of knowledge about where food comes from how you can grow it yourself so that by getting people involved those that know those that don't know but want to learn we can bring them together one can learn from the other and yes they will help with the community garden and thus provide the food bank with Products, but at the same time, they're going to learn tricks, things that they can do at home, put a little garden, whether it's tomatoes or carrots or beets, potatoes. And there are lots of things that, you know, tomatoes, okay, they ripen, right they are. Potatoes, beets, carrots, squash, those are things that you can grow and you can put away in the winter. Oh, I grew, it was 20.5 uh, squash. I was still eating them the following March, and I'm not complaining. So that is something that people can do. For multiple generations have lost the know-how on how to do this. So by getting this garden book, by getting the experts in, by bringing people in, by giving people to talk, and build community, which is another big aspect. We can make our better. A community, a real community. And by having it on that corner, it'll be in Central Park, on the, on the other side of the highway. But a lot of people will just walk in and done this. And there it is, as opposed to going across the highway. Where the community garden was before eight, nine years ago. 
um, you know, as at least from a church's perspective, this is fun. From what happened, Ron's honey company does, this is what they do from the horticultural society. Plants, vegetables, seeds, sea bread, how to manage them, how to grow them. This is what they do. So the current the combined of all these these three groups, the knowledge will be there. To be able to do this job and the volunteers. We did have a horticultural meeting on Saturday. There was I'm gonna say 25 people. In attendance, which we had no idea what to expect. And there were seven or eight years in growing. And let me kind of just not go now, but um, <laughs> those 25, <laughs> just makes sense. they have spouses, they have friends. They, people have been calling and emailing saying, I couldn't make it, but I'm interested. We're going to get volunteers. So I don't know, does that answer? Yeah, no, it's really good. I have another question for you, though. Sure. I was reading it, and uh, apparently we're going to have a fellow of bees or something. Like, are you? Are you not the bee man? <laughs> no, but I'm just talking about it. I assume it is to have some hunts on location, which certainly for the garden would help with pollination. But it will also help the pollination of the flowers that are throughout the area. If there is a desire to plant something, oh, suddenly sunflower seeds, they should grow together. Um, one feeds off the other, literally and figuratively. Um, and so having the bees there, people putting gardens in their own homes after learning what to do in the future, right? They don't. It'll help. It's it's all interconnected. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Yes, sir. Martelli, the question or a question now. Great. <laughs> so I noticed that you have to ask here for the for the soil and the work. I am going to assume there's a timeline on that. Being the first of May, you want to have this garden in the next couple well, weeks. The um, what has been said to me is that we're not going to rush it. This we're going to do it right. Um, last year in Iroquois, we didn't get our bosses in until mid to late July. So we got started late. And even with that, we, we still were able to provide a substantial amount of food. So uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be mid to late July when we get this in. Certainly, the sooner the better. Um, I'm not, what is available in the way of what we're asking for, I don't know. What it would take to have that brought in, I don't know. I can't say that, well, I want it by the end of next week, and it has to all be done so we can plan a long weekend in May. No. Um, I think this is a conversation that needs to be had. And um, again, it, you know, just the bronze, African bronze stuff. Our cultural society, have a river view, our coffee. I think that's something that needs to happen with councils. If expectations are not talked about, people are going to get disappointed. So, no, I guess it's not, I'm not sure what the best way to do that is, but it needs to be done. So let me rephrase my question. Okay. Ideally, yes. <laughs> when would you oh, desire to start? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say probably within three weeks. I mean, that would take it up to a long weekend. And that's not suggesting that, uh, you know, if it goes to the end of May, don't make loss. Um, Chances are we would not be planting on a long weekend in the universe. Um, so, you know, I don't know, three to five weeks, six weeks. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what it would take, but um, whatever works for all the parties involved. Like if we were to come back and say, well, we can get it in a month and a half.
And if that's what you can do, that's what you can do. Does that help? Thank you. I think you might be on the wrong side of the table. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rico. Mr. Dillavine? No, good. Thank you. Yeah, I've got a whole pile. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and, I'll grab that. and I and I apologize. I'm going to go down a different route though. Um, so so I absolutely before I began, I I you know to to Dave and to Paul, I talked to you guys ahead of the meeting, but um, hundred percent in support of the community garden. Right. There's not a bit of doubt that but there's an enormous need. There's food insecurity. There's like you said, an educational component uh, for a well. It's 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 a lost, it's certainly lost. Thing. I mean, we we love doing our raised beds at home. We we do lots of lots of gardening at home, and we're fortunate enough to have the space uh, and the availability to do it. So, uh, my questions, um, you know, it's a church property with a yeah. with a cemetery that's zoned that's zoned a cemetery. To the best of my knowledge, the entire um, uh, lot is zoned for for that. Even even the space that the buildings on. And um, from a, a human being standpoint, um, I know we've had, you know, Paul present in the past with GPR and, and we, we, the thought process is that there are no graves there. Um, but, you know, speaking with elderly folks that were here with the building of the Seaway and, you know, the, the certainly is the discussion is that it's been moved, it's zoned for a cemetery. So for me to support building community gardens on what could be someone's grave is an absolute non-starter. So um, are you locked into that location? It is our preferred choice at this point. Um, and the GPR aside, I know one that yes, the Department of Government and Consumer Services has determined that it is all a cemetery. Regardless of the fact at this point that we have maps showing where everybody's body and they are nowhere near the area where we're supposed to put them. That the action required to we think are ongoing. And um, the Department of Government and Consumer Services are the only ones who can make that change from institutional to either commercial or residential. And um, that's where that stands right now. Yeah, so so again, I'll go back to you know as long as it's as long as it's still zoned as a cemetery, uh, for me until you have that approval from uh, from them to do anything other than have a cemetery there. And I, and I know we said let's start burying bodies, you know, but um, the the reality for me is the reality for me is if it's a cemetery, okay. uh, it's not appropriate to be building things on top of it until it's no longer uh, deemed a cemetery. So, so just just to clarify, if I move on then, um, if it is cemetery, then it is institutional, and therefore should not be subject to any taxation whatsoever. Because right now, that's not the case. That, and and we're that's something that's a different discussion for me. Oh, we're here to talk about community gardening. I'm, I'm happy to have a taxation discussion uh, later uh, if that's the intention. Oh, not if that's the intention. I know. I know. We're here for community gardens. Yes. But the reality for me in a community garden in that location is that it's not an appropriate location. So, um, you know, I would like to solve that problem. I mean, it, and you mentioned before that you wanted it undone that street, and yes, um, I'm not sure in my mind that, that that's possible. But in the past, it has been where the library is. Um, you know, the idea is, and you'll hear it later on about um, part of the uh, Monarch Butterfly Rehab Program is that we're going to do a good portion of that that library uh, lawn as as wildflowers, which I think you're proposing in this as well. Um, there's certainly a collaborative 
a possibility there. Uh, it's been a community garden in the past in that location. It's been watered there. There's water available uh, there to water them, and, and it works within you know the sunflower idea as well as the um, uh, and, and in a highly visible place as well. So that's why I ask if you're locked to the location. Certainly supportive of the project, just not the location. I, I think in terms of locked in, certainly our preference is there specifically because it is on the island, uh, one plus part, uh, where it is, you know, all the housing is there. And so it's, in my mind, maybe I'm wrong, maybe somebody else thinks differently. It's much easier for people to get to there from within the confines you know, from the river up east, west, in, um, than needing to go across the highway. Now, is it a deal breaker? I don't know about that, but certainly the preference is to start there. And I have no doubt that it will be successful. And with the library as another option as well, um, expansion down the road would also likely take into account the use of any area that might be available, including the library. Well, I, I, I would, you know, again, and, and I'm, I don't want to debate this, but I, I just, you know, the library is, is, you know, very well used. So I don't think people have a problem finding our library. Oh, no. But it is also home to our food bank. Yes. Right. So the logic to me is that, you know, if you're trying to educate folks that, that are, are food insecure and that are using the food bank, wouldn't it be logical that the growing area is part of that, that exact same lot? It's an option. It's an option. I just, I struggle with, I just struggle with the cemetery. And I, you know, well, not struggle. I just, I, I will, you know, I'm not going to make any bones about it. Until you have that piece of paper, I, I would not, would not allow that use. So, or I would vote against that use. Um, but I certainly am highly supportive of, of the community guard. I think that there is a location that's available to you. You want to get your volunteers on board and do the location there. Uh, I'd be there to help you build boxes. So um, the last, I did have one other question too, as well. And we do have a community grants and donations program. Sure. We do have a community grants and donations program. Okay. Um, we we did you know a considerable amount of work. Um, uh, a couple of meetings ago, I'm not sure it's the exact date. Uh, there was a deadline that passed, and we did deny, you know, we did deny folks because they didn't have their applications in for any kind and for financial uh, aid. They didn't fulfill the requirements of the application. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of the, yeah, well, the program. And I know that what you ran into when you're a while after was the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, we weren't expecting financial because. We knew whatever deadlines there might have been, there we won by them. Yes, sir. The hope for was that we could kind of, it's not money. Mm -hmm. So it's something that might be more easily obtained than than you know, even though somebody may have money in their pockets, whatever the case may be. But uh you know, pile of dirt over here. Or this wood chip over here, nothing's going to happen with that. It's just going to go with land chip and burn. Um, that's what we were hoping. Yeah, oh, yes. good. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Yeah. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I know if I can answer those questions. Okay. Um, I, actually, I'm, I'm glad that we went that direction because it was going to say that I had as far as other things go. Um, so, and I like the idea of the garden as well. I, mean, I support the garden. The garden sounds great to me. Um, uh, and I like the idea of teaching people you know, as well. I mean, I think that that's, that's a really important thing. And then, uh, you know, as somebody who learned how to garden, I don't know, uh, the spring of 2019, I think roughly it was probably. Yes. Uh, and I mean, you know, I mean, I had 300 pounds of potatoes alone downstairs. <laughs> in my, and then incidentally, that uh, does not last as long as you can eat it quickly enough. So anyways, but yeah, I should have shared it. Um, so, Oh, I, mean, I, I think I'm like I said, I'm in favor of this idea. We just got to figure out uh, some of the other mechanics uh, to the mayor's point and everyone else's point. And uh, uh, I'd love to have a further discussion with us at some point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. 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 Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.
And I know you touched on it early on, and it's funny how it almost seems like things lead into each other, but uh, um, we'll now move on to uh, number six, um, action information and discussion items. Uh, and uh, in the live, we have an action, and we talked about cannabis a moments ago, and uh, uh, here we are entering into a conversation now um, uh, with regards to the site plan control agreement of 3209 County Road number two, HB Holdings Inc. If uh, the CDC would be so kind as introduce us to the topic, that'd be great. This is a uh, the application for rezoning was approved on the parking by council in December 2022. The lands are known as the park industrial uh, land system and four, which permits the Canada's production for the same facility. Um, there's been a small renovation plan to the late system engineering. Um, that was also known for the zoning amendment application. Conservation Authority notes uh, in a review of that report the importance of center and motion control measures. They recommend that signage be in place to protect the proposed land keeping of all the watersheds, and they identify the outreach of our infrastructure will require a permit from the conservation authority. The site was previously serviced with a private well that was shared with an adjacent property, and a new well was now installed on the property. And a hydrogeological and drain analysis um, provides that there is sufficient water and quality in the quantity to service the site. Um, a second permit was issued in 2020 by the health unit. Uh, unfortunately, it expired before the transition of authority to the conservation authority. So, a new permit will be needed from the conservation authority. And um, they noted that due to the constraints on the site, it will need to be a circular system, so it's also included in the agreement that's been made by the health unit. There was a planning report prepared by the understanding of the zoning amendment. Um, and they indicated that the proposed development is going to include all the subsidies designed by and the institution, such as neighbor plans, cultivation facilities. Uh, we also have some information on the agenda and that we can see some additional details. Um, so the proposed agreement is in the agenda package. Um, just on policy, council delegated the authority of site plan control approval to the CAO that is um, required by the planning act. The CAO requires that the Commission of Site Plan Approval that the applicant enter into an agreement with the township regarding the work provided on the site plan. Um, Section 41 of the Planning Act allows that um, a site plan control agreement can be registered and so the entity complies, and that provides um, people on the public as well. Um, so the, uh, the agreement that's in the agenda package uh, has. As uh, NCW agreement also includes the Oregon support and the hydrogen study um, that's been discussed in this. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, this this one is uh, for at least three of us at the table. There's not a, this is not a new issue. We've been uh, uh, we've seen at least twice before, I believe, uh, come before council. So uh, uh, welcome back. I guess would be the short short statement there. Um, all right. Any questions? I'll put it with you, Kim. Or, uh, Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, and I can talk all day on this one. Yeah, me too. Um, uh, and and I find it, um, you know, I, I did send some questions through through the staff in advance, just because I'm frustrated with with the hurdles that appear to be, um, you know, laid down in 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 this case. And I know um, there's so just a staff so. The reason that there's all of the extra that this has to go through is simply because in our bylaw, it doesn't say that we have processing as as part of the cannabis facility. Am I correct in thinking that? Right. So we can grow it. We recognize that it can that can be for growth because it's considered under light industrial, but it's the processing of it that isn't recognized in our bylaw. So they they can't process. Am I am I correct in, in that thinking? 
you know, wouldn't need a zoning bylaw change if it was just a just a grow, but you're you're going to process, so there needs to be a change. Is it true that if it were in the agricultural zone, and you would just extend it? Would you extend the bylaw? Okay, so maybe I'm wrong there. Um, I was thinking, in my thoughts, is that a cannabis facility is considered light industrial. When we start to process it, it changes the zoning and it needs a different set of zones. Am I wrong? You can correct me. I don't mind being wrong. It's just that's where my misunderstanding is because I thought we changed it to allow growth facilities within light industrial, but that the difference was we didn't allow processing or packaging or or retail sale of it. Uh, he can't contribute. He has to. Yeah. So, so, so in the that is the time in the definition section, but it is not a permitted use in any of the zone because that uh, was the uh, city of Committee and Council at the time that any, any application of that was required in the bylaw to go up to the community. So, just so that I understand that correctly, growth as well as processing or so in the agricultural zone, if wherever agricultural use is permitted, within the definition of agricultural use in the zoning bylaw, it it allows growth, yeah. but not processing. Not processing. In that doesn't apply to this though, it because it's industrial. So in my mind, in our zoning bylaw for industrial, we included growth, like indoor growth, as as that. So we've never put that in. Not a permitted use. It's just it's just defined in the definition. And, and it's under agricultural land zoning, not industrial. So why did they go through all this? Yeah. The uh, cannabis production sure. growth facility is based upon the single model. On the basis of structure, like in diagonal use, we can authorize the company to process tax to bring up the store into cannabis and cannabis with the product. The definition will not be uh, an agricultural product processing facility as defined here. Now I'm even further behind. So, so that says our zoning bylaws say that it's allowed. It's defined. That's the definition. And then each. But it's not an allowable use under commercial. Well, so if you, if you work under industrial, you will not find that. Yeah, that's a permitted use. Okay. Thus, that's what we need the zoning bylaw. Thank you. Okay, so that helps clear that helps clear that up a little bit. It was put in for outdoor agricultural zones, but not indoor industrial zones. So if it's coming in as an agricultural zone, in the agricultural zone, that's the reason that we will put it in the agricultural zone. Yeah. Um, but not non-industrial zone. Okay. Okay, so that that clears so that clears that up for, sort of. It's something that we need. It's something that we'll see come forward again because I struggle with, with this. But um, and and I guess again because of the, the I mean that building's been there forever. At one time it was a car lot for crying out loud, and and now we're actually there's no changes as I read in any of their applications that they're going to change the footprint of it of that building uh, at all, and and they have to go through. Like erosion, settlement, like all these hydrological changes. And I, I so, 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 again, with respect to so the comprehension plan, this is going to be required to develop township, sanitation, conservation, or the county investment. That's part of the condition. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So unless unless there are the only reason that it's a study that's required though, like if I wanted to put a car dealership back in there, I wouldn't have to do that study. Is um, there were some considerations for some environmental impact assessment. 
the key reason why it's back in the stormwater management plan is to serve an odor control, so it mitigates some of the impact to the, the water source. So um, I guess if we want to careful review of that plan, we need to not ask for the environmental impact for the town meet. Uh, in order to request for our management plan and then it's just where on the impact to the um to the kind of it in fact we don't want to do a grading variation for the temple so the the stormwater I guess uh the stormwater management plan the pieces that were okay and and I and I understand that it's a heck of a lot easier to do that than it is to do the whole whole year, right? So so I, I understand why it's there, like to avoid that from one step, but but I would, you know, I'm struggling with why why at all, to be honest. But if it is, it is. The last the last question for me is I read through Eastern Engineering's report. It says in their report that there is um, a new septic built on site. So so, but we're requiring them to do another septic again now. So just so that I understand exactly why that's happening. Like I understand there's been a change of approval authority, but like, was there not a plan in place that they built that with the health unit or to the chair? And, and I understand what you're telling me with um, the septic built the health unit, which is a uh, permit to do that, so they use them. Um, and uh, uh, new owners had a septic system installed on the site. They don't believe they had a final inspection of it, and the permit has expired. Um, the conservation authority took over the authority of the regular bill code for its seven approval. Um, and in doing an inspection on the site, they found that that septic uh, that was installed. Didn't meet the requirements of the building code and didn't meet the requirements that were put in place from the council. So, um, I would like to get a statement of the building code and the conservation authority and the city to install. So, the one that was built with the health unit design, they built something dif different or it didn't match the. Because, so I'm struggling with. That one was okay then, but now it's not okay. They have to do a totally different style of system. Uh, the, the health unit is a permit to install the septic system, yeah. and that um, was what was permitted was the over the um, to the previous conservation authority who uh, did the follow up and the inspection, and, um, and it remained in effect. Yeah, uh, I think I said yeah. I apologize if I felt like I was hammering you there. I wasn't. I'm just frustrated with this. It's been a long time. And I want to see something happen there. I, I understand. And the one thing you wanted to come to the question of the is going to be here. Um, no, but I, when I, um, I mean, I'm I'm just like with, with the mayor, I guess. So uh, all these all these uh, site plan C one, C two, and three, four. I mean, I guess you're saying that some of it has to be done because of uh, you know the county set. So it's done. They did it all. Everything's ready. We have a recommendation, man. I'll move that recommendation right now. Well, we'll get that is like, well. well, well we'll Okay. Uh, all right. Well, then, maybe I could leave. Would you like to move this? Yeah, move. All right. Uh, do I have a second? By the way, we are, what we're moving on is that the committee uh, recommended that uh, recommend the council enter into an agreement with the owner of 3209 County Road Number Two as attached. Yeah, I'm happy to second that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's already seconded, but unfortunately, oh, uh, that's what's very cares about that. So, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Right. Here we go. Sorry to make you guys uh, sweat it out so long, but uh, here we are. Congratulations. But we just may want to, like the development coordinator pointed out, that they um, aren't allowed to contribute you know, during this, this discussion. It's yeah. not a delegation, but they're free to ask questions during the question period yep. if they have anything to say. Yeah, so, so uh, I mean, obviously, we can't have 
questions during this part of the thing, but if you do want to stay around uh, until question period, which is probably you know, uh, a few more items down the agenda, we can certainly entertain some questions and that if you'd like. Uh, if you're satisfied, then uh, we will be open. All right, perfect. All right, uh, okay, so moving on then to number 6B, uh, an action uh, which is an amendment to the feds bylaw. Uh, again, to the uh, uh, to the community development chair, sorry, coordinator. You can be chair if I want. So the first file was adopted in June 2022, and uh, that coincides with the adoption of our new comprehensive zoning bylaw. And this is looking at the previous zoning bylaw and new provisions for regulating price and hedge benefits, but our new zoning bylaw did not have those provisions. So to make sure there wasn't a, a gap. Um, we adopted a test bylaw at the same time as a comprehensive zone bylaw. Um, the test bylaw did not allow the opportunity um, to give an exception to those provisions. So, although the provisions are mostly the same as what was in our previous zoning bylaw, as far as like a height and the of those, um, it's, it's separate from the zone bylaw. And so, our planning has to look at the UI as an exception, like a zone bylaw amendment or a variance. Thanks so much. No, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, nothing on that one. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> it seems to be really much. Um, seems to be that chair. Uh, yeah, maybe I need to get the heck out of this chair. <laughs> um, <laughs> you want it? No, no, you're doing well. <laughs> um, okay, so probably two questions, I think. Um, uh, and I'll leave it for, for the item that we're talking about. I have one that maybe is another, another change too. Um, so I'm misunderstanding. The only thing I'm misunderstanding is it goes to committee for approval. Is it this committee that it comes to approval for, or is it the variance committee? The chair of this committee. I, I really, when I first started writing this report, I imagined this going to the committee of adjustments, similar to my hearing. So when I was doing zoning bylaws, it would be the committee of adjustments, but when I was writing this report, people would like to receive this back. Um, document for the committee of the public. It has to be something that implements the bylaw um, or that is um, with the bylaw that implements the official plan. And the sense bylaw is something this left. Well, I'm now just in front of you, but this is my new thing. It's under the municipal act, not the very act. So, That's interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I'm thinking expedience actually not appropriate act, but I was thinking expedience because you can call a variant uh, anytime you want. This committee only meets once a month. And then in the Whitwell month, the name is building one in December, January, or February, but sometimes doesn't meet for those couple months. So thinking it might have been better at but oh well, okay, that one. Um and is there renovations to fences included in the bylaw somewhere as well? So like if there's an existing fence that wasn't wasn't party to a fence bylaw, and somebody wants to do work on that fence. Do they need, or is it part of this? And my apologies for not asking that when I had a have it in my notes. I just forgot to ask it with my listing of questions. 
Make sure that when nobody is very injured and you just go into the right spot in your bylaw. Um, nothing in this bylaw shall prevent the continued use and maintenance of events if a change was lost in the had to be executed at this time. Okay. So if nothing was needed before, you're allowed to maintain something that wasn't needed. Perfect. That's all I need. Thank you. Fair enough. Mr. Ruby? I don't have another question. All right. Uh, the only one I had was kind of touching on what the, what the mayor was asking about is, you know, uh, you know, the idea, and I mean, I know that the uh, uh, that the community of adjustments meets once a month as well. So, um, but being that it can't be them, is it something that we could re or should we contemplate rewording it to say any committee or council so we can just grab the next meeting? I don't know how often these are going to happen. I don't know if that makes any sense to do that, but. Uh, you know, that would be my only, my only question about do we do that to make it easier so that, you know, if it falls that we get one tomorrow, for instance, you know, can we handle it at the next possible opportunity that my council makes sense? What's that take? Well, I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Is that the, uh, so I guess, uh, any other thoughts, anybody? Any other? So with that then, um, with the recommendation, would we then have to say as amended, uh, and the idea of that and see if we uh, get support for it? Seem to think that's what we would do, right? Um, if you have, if you have the rule of the committee, yeah, yeah, if you have that. Uh, that committee must be council and then set up bylaws and then get a form letter to talk and delegate authority to the extension of the bylaw to um, have a committee of Right now, the of the whole does include council, or is that no? It's probably yeah, you, or annual council, I guess, right? Okay, do I have a mover for uh, for the amended or okay, uh, uh, moved by Councillor Smale, seconded by the uh, by the mayor, uh, toward, uh, yeah, the mayor Deshaw, sorry. Fine. All right. Uh, all in favor of uh, the recommendation, by the way, again, sorry, is that committee recommend that council amend the fence bylaw 2022-41 as attached and delegate authority to approve exemptions to the fence bylaw to the committee of the whole, sorry, to any committee of the whole <laughs> or council. Okay. All in favor? All right. Good. Uh, all right. Uh, moving on to number six C, which is information on development in the rural policy area. Um, I believe you're at uh, community development for you're going to introduce this one as well, or is that? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I just want to have the information item for now, knowing that the number of reports will be coming in uh, in those tests. Also, knowing that this was um, an initiative that the group we're looking forward to talking about this agenda. So, um, my apologies, the information is quite recent and probably um, just reviewing what the council and committee at the last uh, meeting. Um, but once we start having things for the committee here and when we follow up, it will result in the next meeting. So, um, the committee had requested in April um, that are considered that and there's a lot that I can do. Policy area to read from one hectare to the point four hectare, which is one acre. And this is going to require a ten amendment and an amendment to the county zoning bylaw. Um, just reminding the county is the approval authority for local additional plans and uh, further consultation with the county by the free um, free consultation. Uh, we need to take place regarding the application of the bylaws. So for the zoning bylaw, the county is the approval authority there. Um, if any of them uh, to the zoning bylaw, if there's an involvement of the Chicago land that goes up and convert into the two one house, maybe not one after the other, but it's maybe one. So, the second consideration is that the mineral lot grants a lot to the rural area be reduced from 70 meters to 45 meters. This um, is just in our zoning bylaw, it's not a requirement in our original plan that uh, that specific width 
Um, it can be considered on a lot of people's cases where it has to be made by the owner. If the application is minor in nature, minor variance could be obtained if it's the approval of the community assessment. Or alternatively, the market could amend the assessment of the building by law to reduce the minimum of offer and requirement. So it's not the case of the plan of amendment. Uh, consideration number three that the maximum number of two new lots considered by consent in the lower policy area be increased to three, which doesn't include the retained, so it's three new lots is what's being considered. Um, and also that the original lot described in policy 713 be defined as the lot as it existed on December 6, 2013, and December 6, 2003. So this would require um, an official plan and amendment and also a joint bylaw amendment. But we're also moving that lot creation in the rural area um, could still occur to ever for part of that kind of subdivision where I a lot of uh, elevated houses in the county um, doesn't allow rural subdivisions to have all the different portions. I guess in our case, that's one of the joint initiative development. Thank you very much. So just so I'm clear that we have the discussion in the right direction, these are these are ideas that that we want to bring forth so that the planner can work on, on these initiatives here. So I'd like to keep the conversation about these initiatives particularly, and, and then knowing that we're still waiting on a full planner, I guess is what I was trying to go with there. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Any, uh, yeah. Let's go. Mr. Dobie? It might be a good idea for council or for this committee to look over is the options and the considerations that are on before it right now to make sure that you're happy with what they are or if you want to make some changes because now is the time to do it. That's it, and agreed. And I think that's the uh, that's basically the, the, the question, the statements there. So I mean uh, you know as worded from from uh, from staff, uh, are there any considerations that, that we want to discuss because you don't like I guess is where we're going there if you're happy with them and then we'll move to what those additional says as we accept those and then send them on for direction. So this was it. Yeah. Um, and so, so we know, and we have spoken with the CAO about this. There are um, uh, some changes coming to to the provincial policy statement that that will affect this. You know, uh, in particular, um, you know, it's going to go. It looks like it's going to automatically go to three in the, in the provincial policy statement. Um, in the changes that will be coming forward in there, I haven't read through all of. All of the changes yet myself, but there are some some changes there. So, my question is, um, you know, what what when we make the changes and we do them, I mean, if they're going to change things in the PPS, does it make sense to be doing our application before they make that change, or should we wait until like because the United County is going to have to update theirs, and then. If we automatically apply after that, then then it'd be automatic approval. They couldn't deny it. Um, and until we know what those changes from the we know they're coming and they're out for comments now from from staff. Um, so so if we know that that's happening in the near future, then would we like? Is it worthwhile waiting a, a small amount of time until that PBS? The PBS changes because do we really want to do an OP amendment and zoning bylaw amendments when we're going to have to do them to reflect to reflect those changes anyways? And won't the United Counties have to do theirs before we do ours? Because we have to be congruent with that, correct? Or the thought is. Well, if there's a clause in those changes that is going to tell us or does tell us that we whether we do the initial plan or not, that PBS is up, that's what the rule is. Like even if we're late in, in doing that later, then, then those changes would apply. We discussed this with you know we have a question um how do we need to get this report whether or not we would apply to so, you know, see how these changes work okay. There were some of the long lines that there have been so many changes recently happening like rapidly, and I think we all have waited and for 
Okay. okay, that that makes that makes a ton of sense. Then, so then, hearing that, um, you know, I, I would make the suggestion for if they're already going, there if the PBS is already going to change and go to three, then why wouldn't we go more aggressively and go to four? Okay. Okay. Right. And and if we go to go to four and we go to the minimum size, it has, like here's the way I look. If we can add one now at 2.7, 2.47 or 2.748, right? And then and in the end, we can end up doing three at 0.9 eight acres. You end up with almost the exact same amount of land, but you, you end up with a little bit more intensified development along the side of a rural road. You you lose the same amount of land virtually either way. And I know when we knocked doors through the, the mandate that we got from the folks that were there, they didn't want three acre lots, right? They hated having to maintain it. Most of the people we talked to said that you know, we prefer that it was still the farmland and then they were still farming. So so hearing that from most of the people that, that bought it, they were they think a 0.98 acre lot when they move in from the city is enormous, right? So if if it can appropriately house a septic system in a well on 0.98 acres. Why wouldn't we go to that? And that would be my first suggestion because they can always add more land if they want to add more land to it, right? If we force them to start out at 2.74 acres, they can still add land to that if they want, but then they got to come back for another approval if they want to shrink it. And we've done that as well. We did it um, uh, several occasions in the last term where we allowed people with health unit approval um, to to go on smaller lot sizes, but my idea is that why make why make more red tape? Why make it uh, another step that folks have to go through if we can cut those steps now and we can get lots developed? I mean, the idea is that we need we need lots to have houses. We've heard people talk about a housing issue already on a couple of occasions tonight. Why not create more lots? Get more lots available for folks uh, so that we can we can give them opportunity to build if they want to build. More lots lowers the price. It's houses built. So my suggestion would be like, and I know it's probably not a number throwing around kind of kind of deal, but I would I would go with the um, um, the smallest lot size possible. I think it's 0.98 acres, and uh, and I would say I'd like to see it at four sentences versus three. And I and I know the PBS is going to say three and maybe some different sizes and frontage requirements and stuff like that. But I want to go with the minimum uh, possible. Uh, and we can increase upon that if, if they desire. That'd be my vote. Okay. Mr. Word to it in my mouth for, uh, I just have one <laughs> comment. It was, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. You're, you're working hard. Oh. Um, <laughs> it says at the bottom, note the additional lot creation rural area may still occur. In, oh no, sorry. Additional information will be provided to the committee in future reports prepared by Nova County. What's our future report? If we have any idea, will we hear it in June? Will we hear a report in July? Any timeline on that? I just kind of, as you know, like to get things moving. So is there any timeline that we will have this report back in the deck? In, in, will be in June, a report yeah. of the CDC. Good, thank you. All right, thanks for that. No problem. Thanks. All right, there's another more. No, Mr. Debbie, we have to have one as well. So, with of the the county's official plan, I don't know how many people have read parts of that county's official plan, but when it comes to a lot of things, it's like a blank, and it says, "Look at the specific townships plan." That's what it says in the county's plan. Look at the specific townships plan. So the county is pretty vague on um, a lot of things in the plan that pass it back down to the county. So, <laughs> and if I could just talk about, I realize that there's some information here that there is a chance for reduced lots other than the two hectare. But you know, it's my understanding, unless things have changed, that things do change. That if I was looking to get, if I come into the township with a, a proposal for a one acre law, the process would be that I would have to go to in front of a committee of adjustment to get the, the uh, size reduced 
which is going to cost me how much money? How much money do we look for the, before the account would be made an adjustment? Is the for the um, yeah. okay. So I'd like it to be $650 to get my lot reduced from a hectare to an acre. And I guess I'm just wondering why we're putting people through. And, and I mean, I think I, I think it would come through here. Right. Sure, I think that was coming in your lot. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Okay. So, yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, well, we don't have a fee on here as a discussion. But I mean, just, can this maybe reduce the size of the lot? Is there a lot here or a lot? Well, I thought any reduction in, in measurements, I had to come through the committee adjustment, but I might be wrong. I remember one time we reduced a lot, which was on the Scott Road, which at one time it was a total, total mess in the official plan of the zoning bylaw because they didn't match. The zoning bylaw was at an acre and the official plan was at a hectare. And it was just a misunderstanding. So there was a a lot that was taken on, a proposal for a severance was taken on the Scott Road, and they had to take it at two hectares. And for them to go to the one acre lot, we had to go in front of the committee adjustment to have the lot lower to one acre. And it was a cost to the individual. So I think by reducing the lots to the one acre, they can have two acres, they can have three acres, they can have four acres, you know, for the minimum lot. It is a bit of a I like it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Mr. May, you had one more question? Uh, and, yeah, and I, and I think it directly relates back to this. And, and you know, as I spoke before, and, and I have had this discussion with, with the CEO as well, and, um, but it, it relates to this, dis, this discussion because there, there is a will of, of council here, and I think we're a committee for that matter. Um, you know, and, and I think it's important that we, we nail it down and we narrow it, we narrow it down actually, because I don't know how long the comment period is on the changes to the TPS, but um, I think my question to staff is that when staff makes comments um, and reports back on, gives reports or gives comment to, to the PPS when they're asked to give comment or, or the planners for that matter as well, um, you know, what, I guess my question is what direction do they go under when they get that? Is it the will, like, is it the will of our committee or is it, I mean, I know that staff has a very firm grasp upon, upon us, but does Novatech, if Novatech's commenting on it, do they do they comment on, on it from an Edwardsburg Cardinal perspective, knowing you know, that we're aggressive, that we, we want development, we want that sort of stuff, or do they comment on it, you know, their way, like, I mean, I, I, if they're commenting on my behalf, I'd like to know, you know kind of what they're, they're not. Okay. Okay. So, so we will be submitting comments and making the assumption. <laughs> and so do we have clear direction then? Like does staff have what they need from from the group at the table to make sure that our comments and our, our wishes are accurately represented in the comments and the feedback we give to the comments. So through, through, through the chair, I think we have a pretty good understanding. Uh, um, one of the reasons that we brought these considerations back was to ensure that we got the conversation from the previous meeting. It appears now that three is not three, three is not four. Four, right? I've always, so, <laughs> well, I've always been four. So, so in, in, fair, in fairness to the conversation, it, 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 it's really first. Yeah. I wasn't here the last meeting. Well, it's all nice. So, anyway, so yeah. there, there was not consensus for the four in that meeting in the last meeting. That's why we're bringing it back to some consensus. Okay. So that when we're getting the overtake report and when we're looking at comment on the PBS, that we're clear on what that field is. So that we can have a That's all. So then if I can, um, to the to the chair then, um, you know, maybe we can look, um, 
uh, uh, for all members of, of committee and, and council um, to um, you know commit to giving giving solid direction to to staff tonight. You know if, if uh, that suggestion can come out, so that way staff is prepared to make comments that represent the viewpoints of whatever the will of the committee and council is. And that's fair. And, and, have that, then yeah, and, and, and I think just before, and I think we will ask that question. That's fair. Um, and, and unfortunately, I, uh, uh, Mr. Toby provided something last time we had a meeting, and I uh, can't seem to locate where I put it. But I can't. I think there was other areas, other other townships that did have four as their separate number as well. If not mistaken, is that correct? Uh, I don't know if you have that. Um, that's correct. That was correct. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I mean, uh, so maybe it's best to take it as a vote. But anyway, why don't we just uh, go through the through the table and uh, uh, give me a number. Three or four would be the would be the question, or if a different number, throw that out there as well. So, uh, Kim, how about you? Well, no, we're asking we're asking the committee. So, uh, we'd like your opinion on it. So, four. Mr. Four. Yeah, I've already said four. Four and four, not three, not two, not one, yeah, yeah five, four. <laughs> Um, and the smallest, uh, smallest lot and smallest, smallest permanent. Deputy Mayor? Four. 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 I don't even have to say anything. I think, is that a nice firm direction for, uh, for staff? <laughs> I think for consideration number three it is. Yep. <laughs> one, one thing I would ask a little bit of clarity on with, with respect to the smallest lot possible. And that's the smallest lot possible without additional requirements. Or... Yeah, so a question that I had, I know we talked about put four acres last last meeting. Um and, and sorry, what was this right? Point four hectares. Point four hectares, sorry, yeah, point four acres would be really small. Um but <laughs> what I was trying to like, ascertain from that is, you know, um, and I just you know, what is the you know, and I know there's I think we talked a bit about there's 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 features or factors that could come into play there. So, you know, I wasn't necessarily settled on the 0.4 hectares versus what's the minimum you can get away with knowing you're probably going to need, you know, a septic system and a well and everything else. What is the lot size? And I know we talked about 0.4 acres, but I wasn't sure. I I had the feeling that we were going to seek what that number could be as opposed to providing it on the floor that was my perspective. So, but uh, anyway, so, um, you know, but so anybody have any comments on that? I mean, I don't know. I just, I think whatever we can do based on the facilities would make the most sense. But just look, look, there's problem. Yep. Rachel, could um, instead of asking those that could give us information to make this point for the second to the conversation, um, we could ask for the recommendation on what the minimum lot size could be. Uh, uh, to, to the chair, yes, I, I would prefer. Um, I mean, it's great to ask the planner for, um, you know, for their for their opinion. But I, I would prefer that we went to it with with what our expectation is first, and so that they know exactly what what we want to do that, and then let them come up with some other argument. We we have two point seven four two point four seven at this at this point. Um, uh, I certainly, you know, it's a different a different group at the table. It's a different direction. We're certainly far more aggressive when it comes to rural development than than um, uh, we've seen in the past. And I want the planner to understand where we we come from as a group. I don't suspect that that probably changes the outcome, but I want them to know. No, and, and that's where we're and my only concern is, you know, I am a non-specific expert, for instance, so I don't know that number. So for me to say, hey, maybe it's half an acre, I, I have. You know, I don't have the expertise to they would want to make that decision, to be honest. But uh, uh, yes, just we can come back to that. Mr. Chairman, just looking at the nine municipalities that I went through and uh, looked at the severance requirements, um, there's, there's no other municipality that has a severance allowance on less than half, than less than an acre. So I'm thinking that you might have a hard call with anybody building a, a house and a septic system on half acre. I just don't think it's possible. Mm -hmm. I think it's got a well point nine eight or one eight. So any other comments on this particular topic? 
So, I mean, uh, what's the direction we want to take then? I mean, you know, like I said, what's that, sorry? One acre. One acre? The consensus on one acre, and I, and I realized that we'd like it to be smaller than that if it was possible. But uh, okay, you're okay with that, Mr. Doby? Okay, one acre. One acre, one acre. I like one acre, but I still don't see an arm finding there that's smaller as possible. Yeah. And and me neither. I think it depends on the. I mean, that's how you do the ask, and I think that's up to staff to uh, to, to wordsmith that for us. And uh, you know, maybe for the mayor's point, it's point eight four acres or something like that. Yeah. That's point nine acres. Yeah, okay, and uh, so that's that. Uh, on to you guys, for consideration number two goes, we talked about uh, this this 70 down to 45 meters, and I don't even remember where that number came from. Did we establish that? Did you guys that? Yeah, that was the township. And that was the minimum that somebody else, that was the lowest minimum we saw. There was one, which was a little bit even less than that, but the majority of the was Yeah. Okay. So is everybody okay with 45, or are we? Uh, yes. <laughs> Any, uh, any objection to 45? 24. I was just showing 24 hectares is 0.98 meters. Fair enough. Okay. So I think what we're asking for is 0.4 acres if you ask, anyways, as opposed to one acre. So 0.4 hectares. 0.4 hectares. Did I say it again? Okay. okay. All right. Uh, any objection to 45 meters? Okay. For that, I think we can say there's a thing there. The last thing we didn't talk about then is consideration number four, uh, which is the December 2013 date as opposed to the 20, 2003 date. And again, that number, I don't remember. Was that something that the deputy member proposed that last time? Or is that the number that staff was able to establish? Or? That's something that was in the local plan. Yeah, I think, uh, Mr. Chair, I think I'm going to take a simple form that's 2023 now, and it's 2003. Okay. Can I ask you that? Yes, sir. Through the chair, what's the implication? I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not sure I understand the significance. I, I, Between 2003 and 2013, what's the, the implication? That's what I mean. I mean, I know it's 10 years, but so there's the there's whether or not how many lots outside of the zone of property, um, and that limit is applied to uh, a, a lot of records. Well, I would want to bring up since 2003. So if I have a lot and I send them off a specific lot, and I sell this lot, that person is then able to separate sources, but that's two lots from a lot of record. Or this person could separate them from more that, but then that's two lots from a lot of record. But you can sever off two lots and then sever off two lots from that, and then sever off two lots from that. You're essentially creating a subdivision there. They're going to kill two lots from the lot. So, so through the chair then. So then, 2013 becomes less restrictive to to, to new lot, like to to new lot development versus 2003. 2013 it is. That's my vote. That's my vote. <laughs> 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 and and I, mean, I, I think I mean that seems like a reasonable date to me. I was. Floating around in my head, the idea of, and I suspect it's probably not an idea to say last 10 years and just leave it at that. And then it's always evolving. But I think probably if we said 2013 and then revisited this in 10 years from now, it'll change again to 2023. That's up to, but that's up to yeah, our, our, our kids on council, whoever it would be. So, okay. Uh, any objection to uh, 20, 2013 is the date? Objection. Okay. Mr. Deputy Mayor? Nope. Nope. Councilor Fayol? Councilor Marco? Nope. Okay. So I think that solidifies ask number four as concerned number four as well. Um, okay. Any other discussion on this overall? Is where I want to close this one up. Yes. That's it. That's fine. And you did get everything you need from that, I'm assuming. Sure. Uh, anything I needed to run, um, you know, we have on a on a report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would like to better understand what the comments in the proposed PDF would be. We haven't really talked about the well, is is that the kind of thing I'm asking? Sort of, you know, with the mayor, you know, um, where you'll know more in a month when we have the when we have it back. I don't think it's going to change the ask necessarily to uh, to the planner, but we'll know more in a month potentially. 
Yeah. I mean, I mean, I know. I think I can say that here into this discussion, but there, you know, and my knowledge of of it is that there are um, supposedly I I I have not uh, been able to read to read them myself. Um, certainly, again, I, I talked to the CEO about the the changes to the PPS as far as connecting the partial services. Um, but in the way that I, and I've read a couple of the paragraphs, I don't really see, um, you know, the words, uh, you know, in the settlement area still remain in the, in the paragraphs. Um, we specifically commented because of, of the proposed subdivision. Um, uh, and Roma took it on. I know Robin Williams presented it at, at Roma about and used our uh, that exact uh, example. You know, you can't connect the sewer line that goes by your front door because you're not in not infilling. It's not considered infilling. It's not considered general rounding out, and it's not within the settlement area. But yet the sewer line goes by the door, and you're not allowed to connect to it. And the planner gave recommendation against it, and everybody on the committee supported it. So um, supposedly that change has been that our situation was used to formulate the new connection um, or the new policy where, where uh, you'll be allowed to connect to partial services or the recommendation is, but um, I'm not an expert in, in that. And that's certainly a staff function, I think. Um, I just want to make sure though that it, it's enough or it says enough so that if it isn't that we actually we you know, get the will of, you know, of what what the group wanted. And certainly at the time, the planner recommended against, and but yet everybody on the committee wanted. We asked MMH, and they were um, non-committal. I think is is a fair way of saying it. So we were sort of left with we didn't really know how to proceed. So uh, and I've been told that the changes do reflect our, an ability for us to connect without uh, putting us in front of the. Uh, uh, yeah, I would call it the OMB, but I'm lacking words right now, whatever it would be, but you know what I mean? Yeah, so I just want to make sure that we, and I don't think we can have that discussion tonight. I mean, right? I mean, nobody's equipped for it, but um, I, my concern, I think, when I spoke before was to, to so that staff understood where council, if it's different than what I think it is, then, you know, then that's okay. But I, you know, it's going back a long time for the last discussion we had about that subdivision. There were, uh, you were on CDC, Councilor Smale and Councilor Martel weren't on council when we had, when we had that discussion at the table. So for me to, I think I know how they, they view it, um, but I, I don't know that. We've never actually had that discussion, um, you know, at the table. So um, if I expect staff to understand and know that, we sort of have to have a discussion, but we can't have that discussion if we don't know or have an interpretation of what that policy actually says. I don't know that I need it that way. I think it's broader than that, that, you know, that it reflects, you know, the changes we needed to be able to attempt to partial services, no matter where. Anyway, anyway, yeah. Um, if, if I may, I think that's what I'm just saying, but before consideration, it's pretty clearly what you're saying that I'm going to extend into the rural areas. So I think that can relate to the to Okay. So comfortable with that. Uh, however, sometimes that the policy can be a little bit cryptic with respect to uh, uh, the case. So we 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 will look at it compare what we think are what are some of the things that we're going to have to 
Your council will be referring that to us, yes. yes. And uh, the council itself. And if I, I can say to staff, hopefully that's the will of the group at the table, but that that is fantastic. And that's, you know, that's, um, we'll probably talk far too long about it. I knew that would be your answer, but I it always is. And, and I know you guys do a fantastic job. So, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that we had that discussion at a table, right? Not just me me and you in an email or, or something like that. I mean, we need input from all five, so. Yeah, any objections on council? We'll see that at the uh, council meeting at the end of this one. Good. All right, good. There you go, that's some more there. Uh, that's okay. Uh, moving on to number 6B, number one. Uh, so work economic development. This is information on the tourism partner project, follow 44. So, um, so it's been we've got uh, a tourism project. Um, we are partnering with our regional tourism organization, which is RCO Mind, uh, also with the municipality of North Grenville and one of the business group, uh, and also the Villa Valley Provincial Park. Um, our plan is to develop uh, a slot price tourism trail by working to go with the park in the level and accessible. And I think South Friday is a good highlight businesses and something that are located on Highway Road 44. Uh, the trail will be named Follow 44. So I think we just support some of the activities for that project moving to. North Granville is taking the lead role in project execution and preparation. The North Granville has always been asked to partner um, on this on this project with them. Um, while the majors is actually a special recipient of the RCA Mines Partnership Funding Program for this partnership, so the financial partners here are RCA Mines paying fifty percent of the North Granville for land twenty five percent and the Granville is paying twenty five percent of that cost as well. Um, and uh, the payments are made to RC9 and they take care of the uh, the financing part of that project. They would pay any grants to come up with or third party pay of any of the additional options in that grant. Um, so the goal is to start this project in late summer or early fall. It involves a lot of um, interactions with local businesses and even some new networking events, hoping that. Um, the the Sunrise Trail can be grow into um, where businesses can partner together and create their own itineraries, also to the care and create to the to the trail. Um, part of the project would be putting signage along the route that would advertise the location on on Fall Forty Four, and uh, we would have a social media account and a web page that would be placed on each of the partners' uh, website. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, I think this, we talked about this a few times as well. Maybe just you and I talked about it, but uh, I just think anytime we have any any little thing where we can get, you know, uh, more people coming into the area through whatever routes, this is every area, then this is a great thing, and it'll support good business. So uh, I'll leave it uh, at that point in time to uh, uh, Councilor Marcano. Any other questions or comments? Or? Is there any possibility we can finish the route to the town of Yes, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Smith? Yeah. Oh, you uh, I think it's great, uh, especially when we're working with other townships and, and even we're only going to 44 and Spencerville, like Mr. McDowell says, there's no reason why we can't expand it all the way down. So, uh, well done. Thank you very much. Very excited to see. You. It won't be on my bike, but I'll be in the car. So. <laughs> Something inspired me. <laughs> sure. I, uh, I, I again as well think that this is fantastic. I've been following the social media to to the east of us with South Storm on and and South Dundas, and they've been doing, you know, uh, use follow the QR code for a long time down there to go to all of the different assets and that sort of thing. And this RTO is is you know just building upon that but for our area and and I love that we're going to work along with uh with North Grenville we've talked about you know uh, an amalgamated collaboration for quite a long time here and and it's nice to see efforts like this moving forward so well done
I think it's a great idea. <laughs> and I want to give kudos to the counties, anybody that has driven the County Road 44, particularly from the Hindman Road into North, well, into North Brook, Brentford. They have the massive cuts of the ash trees that are dead. And it just looks so beautiful now. And the trees are gone. You know, green grass is all over. So I think they, they really, they must have cut a dozen trees last week. And they're like this. Yep. 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 Oh, I think that's great. And I think it might even be started. It's fantastic. Yeah, sure. It's good. Cool. So then, and I echo that as well. I mean, I think this is a great initiative, and, and for a very low dollar uh, uh, from the township's perspective, to help that help encourage some encourage travel to the area. And uh, uh, in the back of my mind, I keep hearing the car, uh, the cars movie theme now going on in my head. But uh, anyways, <laughs> what can I say? Um, so, uh, what do you need from us here? Just to say okay? No, it's just simple. Simplation. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. All right, uh, moving on to number six, uh, C, plan recreation. Item number one is a discussion on the Monarch Restoration Program. Is that the CAO's going to get to talk about butterflies, or is that? That would be the meeting with you, This, uh, there's been some talk for, for a few years now around this uh, rights of way uh, project. And the application came out I want to say early April the complaint to the timeline with respect to putting the application in submitted. Um, and I know uh, in the last uh, couple uh, um, application updates we uh, we were unable to get something together. So with the with the help of Sanitation and Conservation, we uh, Put together an application and we have just selected a few, uh, a few locations as uh, possible spots for the uh, sort of need of uh, meadow garden from, uh, from an education standpoint. One of the local uh, public spaces where there's a fair bit of traffic, so we can get some equipment and uh, educate so that I can get the public on that project. And then uh, the potential for expanding it into some of the things uh, at a later date with respect to, uh, to this program. So, can I indicate that I did receive word that our application is successful? Mm -hmm. if they are interested in, uh, in seeing the project move forward. One of, the, one of the areas that we can throw together, I'm sure that there's going to be uh, some discussion with the location. But the 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 you know, the partner received that funding, and now that we know that, certainly we have to hear some feedback from the committee on uh, on locations. Uh, there's probably eleven or or more that have been, uh, been raised uh, with the uh, staff of the council. So I take no offense to the. Uh, uh, the locations that uh, that were really the chosen in most of our locations is only in the look kind of place a little bit of a caveat that we need to be in the room that same size if not a little bit bigger. We wouldn't want to make use of it's in the house that we're getting back. <laughs> All right. Uh all right, on that note. Uh, Docs Kim, I mean, this is, uh, sounds like it's right up your alley as far this, as horticulture goes. The thing I am most excited about, absolutely. I think it's fantastic that you were able to meet the deadline and get the funding. Um, and you know, to me, any location is a good location to start. Um, but I do love um, the idea by the library if, um, this is where council is supportive of 
um, developed into community therapy because we're still like naturally raised um, that there. And um, I always say, you know, I kayak up and down from from uh, Cardinal to Iroquois. I'm up down there all the time, and that whole corridor there is the perfect spot for a uh, monarch butterfly um, sanctuary type area, yeah, um, and a great place to have no food and it wouldn't interfere with any agriculture or anything. And so, um, but this, this, uh, the areas that you have marked out here are also very touristy and, and would attract, I think, um, so, like I said, any location is a good location, but um, but yeah, I'm very pleased with this. That's the capacity. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, I never would have thought about the term cross pollination before, but I guess that could apply here as well. Um, okay, Mr. David, David, um, I'm a big lover of monarch butterflies, and uh, I've been around a, a lot longer than <laughs> anybody in this room. <laughs> and I can remember all the milkweed that used to be around. You know, the farmers put in the chili in the fields and eat them off. But now, with the new insecticides that they have, they you never see milkweed hardly at all. Um, I'll take it back a little bit further because it always has, as I said, a soft spot in my heart when I was a, a kid going to grade one. And it was at the one room school in, Sp in Ventnor. And just get this, there were three in grade one, by the way, but there were eight classes in the school. And one of the uh, things that the teacher did was one of our objectives was to write a, a few sentences or a paragraph on the monarch butterfly. And I remember uh, catching a monarch worm, putting a milkweed and the teacher put it in a bottle and we watched that progression on that monarch butterfly uh, hatch until it became a butterfly from the cocoon, from the worm cocoon. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I, one of the, pretty much the only thing that I remember at school, right, in the one room school. And, uh, and I've just actually contacted a, a, uh, a place in Stittsville uh, that sells uh, the flowers and shrubs and that sort of thing. They've got these new bushes now, and I really suggest that everybody needs to buy one. It's called a butterfly bush, and it's a cousin of the milkweed, but it's more in a bush form, and it has all these masses of orange flowers on it uh, that help the butterfly, and, make, and it's a good replacement for just the ordinary milkweed. It's called the, the uh, I don't know what the Latin word is, words are for it, but it's called the butterfly weed. If everybody were to buy one and put it on your garden, we could do butterflies work. They're quite attractive. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I'll go. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I love this. Sorry, yes, go ahead. You want Without a follow up, mm -hmm. so is, is that less uh, aggressive with respect to the interaction between uh, because with milkweed and agriculture don't mix very well? Yeah. It, it's a plant that you want to dig ahead before it seeds, but they say it won't seed in the same spot as the original plant, so it may get carried away. But they say you dig ahead them before they seed, but they're beautiful, just uh, look them up and uh, I'm in the bottom of the pond, but, uh, it's unusual, but you're allowed to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wanted to go back to the one house, the one house, the uh, one house, the one house thing. I'm quite familiar with it. Hey, I love this. I, <laughs> um, uh, I am uh, so happy to hear that we are successful with this. I've pushed uh, this for the last two or three years with Victoria Woodhouse, uh, I think is the is the person's name, and and certainly um, I think I saw it not necessarily as as butterfly. I think it's grown into butterfly. I think it originally was pollinator um, rights of way, and it's sort of grown into being monarch, you know, monarch mixed in with with that initiative as well. And I know Councillor Hunter spoke, you know, about why we don't do roadsides and roadside ditches and stuff next to cornfields and in farmers' fields, but um, certainly with respect to Kim, that's what I have in my notes is 
you know, that where we um, where we cleaned out that entire canal bank uh, along the highway too, and we struggle to maintain because of all the wild parsnip and and that sort of stuff. Um, you know, that that area for me comes to mind right away because every single person driving by would would see that. But uh, to further your point, and, and I've mentioned this to the CAO without knowing you were on board of it as well, but that area um, from where the old boathouses were towards the cut of Iroquois um, has a roadway that is that is used often with with uh, fisher people and uh, dog walkers and stuff like that, but uh, certainly not maintained to to a great to a great degree and to think that you know we could plant it and, and grow it into something that could turn into you know uh, you know beautiful flowers and and a place for monarchs to thrive i, I think that that's a fantastic uh, location for it uh, as well as the library my concern with the peninsula across from the legion is that um, several times during the year uh, that area is used whether it's um you know, at, at uh, for fireworks, whether it's at uh, Canada Day or whether it's at Labor Day, uh, it certainly is a connect a connecting point. It's an overflow for parking uh, for Legion events, and it's certainly um, you know a, an underutilized area. But I think in in the growing of that area, it's going to see more and more use in in, in the future. And I'd hate to see it limited because we uh, we were doing a restoration program there or or the restoration program there got ruined because you know we wanted to park on it to watch fireworks in Canada Day. So I'm not sure that that place in my mind um it, although it would be a fantastic spot to showcase it because everybody would see it. And I just think that there may be better places uh, suited suited for it. So two cents. And and I would add that I think the the name of the program is the right right of way rights of way, right? Or right of way, meaning that it's supposed to go on Unused road allowances right. isn't that the idea? Yeah, so it, the, 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 the terminology is the following restoration program, but because the monitor did sort of the uh, we'll call it figurehead of the uh, 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 it, it, it is a complete column of the project, but yes, it's in it's in uh, roads of way, uh, for, 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 right? So there are some other locations. Uh, in this respect, to, to the uh, industrial park where uh, uh, the homeowners public station the plant is going there to the greenfield has and all that. You oh, know, like within that, it, it, there's a spot that it could be done, but the real you know, the, the green lines, at least for, for, for the, the, this first project, was to get it in a location where there's going to be lots of traffic that could be any issues to get it there because you wouldn't see it. In some of those other locations, that it comes in easier to compete. Uh, does it reduce maintenance? Is that the idea is that it, it, it yeah. stops noxious weeds? Am I not? Am I incorrect in thinking that? Yeah, so the, the, the free the, the free library is that you would uh, you, you would fill the area and avoid work to come. Right. Reduces maintenance, reduces costs. So that, that's the that's the yes. okay. uh, part of that one of the change in issue is about late year you're not happy to involve that's sort of what we what we would consider fence line fence line in some of the little roads you would just be doing the site uh you know, the site trying to head it if you would necessarily in some of those areas but you know still in the community that you would want to be Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, I, I agree. I kind of like to, first of all, you said we're successful. What are we successful at? How much? Is that in the description here? We're successful? Yeah. The 3,000, 2,500, 2,000? Uh, yeah. Sorry? 3,500. Okay. So why can't, and that's supposed to do such an area. I agree, I agree with the mayor. I, I don't like the option C, 
I like the location, no question, but I like to save it for, I've seen it how too many times we need it for overflow. So, and B is a great place. Well, can we split them up and do two projects for us, uh, really chair to the CEO? Or could we do half at the library and half up at the, uh, at the uh, industrial park? Or does it, a square footage or, or is this? Okay, so we could do uh, the library and up at the number two at the industrial park down by our, our sewage area down in there somewhere. Is that right? Yeah, well, but the, yeah, the potential exists for 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 um, in your location. I would just be a little hesitant um, um, with respect to the range and the area because you you really only have the, the back side of the uh, of the ditch to 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 the property. In that particular area. It sure would give us lots of uh, advertisement, though. Oh, the jeepers! That's all I'm looking at. And it's a terrible spot to clean and keep clean, like oh, the cup. This is a cup. So that that's my only or that and down by the old boathouses. I think that's a super spot. So, but an excellent idea. Can't wait. Hopefully, we can maybe expand it next year mm -hmm. to another project. Yeah. Get it in our own budget. I think it's something that we need. So, thank you very much, Mr. CEO. Well done, Mr. Will. Yeah, well done, uh, to the CAO. But I agree with Steve. Uh, I would like to see it at the library along the canal. Like he said, to the mayor, everybody who's in the cardinal or goes out of cardinal would see it. I think it's beautiful for nothing else. Yeah. That would be my number one pick to be along the river highway. Dr. Mattel? I like the library location because it's a library location. And if we're talking about it through the chair, we're talking about how educated people are. It's a perfect marriage. And the food. Uh, food uh, yeah. I really love the site down by the Legion, but I agree with my fellow people at the table here. There's just too much traffic there, but that's not to be said that they didn't do a bank down there or do a couple of uh, boxes, you know, again, just because there's so much traffic down there. It's a great opportunity for education. You know, if we had like a like 10 by 4, CD box with them and just a bunch of information and possibly the opportunity to move this forward or you know next summer or offer incentives to residents to put their own library or like their own butterflies. Yeah. As for the butterflies, you know, we need pollinators, we need to follow some their alphabet. It's just a thought. <laughs> Uh, my last thought was going to be on um, my right here. There seems to be some discussion here about who actually is the oldest person for data. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not me. <laughs> That's all I've got. Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> all right. Um, um, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think it's a great initiative too. And, and uh, uh, I did not. Maybe you did not appreciate the potential issue with with uh, location number C or C, um, you know, and and uh, uh, you know, I, but I sort of had similar thoughts as we were developing this conversation to to Councillor Martel on, you know, is there something we can do along the bank itself where you can't really park a car? But I must confess, I don't think I've seen cars park all the way around there. But uh, uh, you know, either that or or is there a is there a third option uh, that you contemplate? I'm not sure that the third option necessarily was the one you're proposing over by the. Uh, uh, the waterworks itself, but maybe that was your third, your third best option. But uh, uh, it was like I said, I'm all in favor of it, and uh, but I, I do trust, uh, uh, do trust you to be able to figure out if you think there's another better location that we could have that, or if we can make the one work and by the way, work like that, I think that'd be great on Legion Air personally. Um, and then the so uh, so I guess we touched on a little bit with regards to to maintenance costs, and it sounds like this actually will save us maintenance costs. I was trying to figure out if there'd be maintenance of the actual site itself, but would that be, you know, offset by? Well, yes. If you if you're if you're if you're not cutting that, that so we'll say it's a library, for instance, that, that area that we're actually 
uh, my nerves. You know what? You're, you're no longer familiar with the use of technology. You start. You, you set around the front and say, "Okay, that's what we're doing today." Um, yeah. With respect to the other slide, uh, there, there was some thought with respect to uh, the that now rank along Dundas Street near that, um, I'm, I'm going to say, um, uh, in around uh, Benson Joseph Street, uh, had it had, had a lease on that bank. Um, there's, all, there, 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 there's a little more work that has to be done there for my application. It is, it is fairly deep, that is certainly a Simple, a uh, simple starting location. With, 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 with this Are you talking about? So, did it, are you talking about the north side or the south side of the bank? Uh, the south side of the bank in front of the house. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and you talk about it as an education thing. So it would be signage and everything else. I'm assuming. And, and uh, yes, that is the point. That we'd be putting up some of the Okay. And I mean, I, you know, I, I think we all sort of agree that the library is a great place to do that, especially in light of the education and everything else. And, uh, you know, I, I know, for instance, my wife, when, when she was uh, teaching kids, they would always have a, like a butterfly, uh, you know, butterfly projects all the time. So, I mean, people love their butterflies for sure. It's, it's a great thing to, uh, uh, to create a habitat for them. So, Mr. Mayor, I think you have a I, I do. And I just, um, because I don't think we're clear uh, as a group um on on the across from the legion i know that there were a couple of you that spoke in, in favor a couple of us that spoke against it so i don't think it was clear um, and i want to make sure the staff has has clear direction so in my mind I, and i'm fine with a small area of of that peninsula but not on the way the diagram was where you lose the entire uh, area i just i just there, it gets utilized too many times for for festivals and i certainly support those festivals, I, I support butterflies, but but I support those festivals and and you know parking. I don't want parking to become uh, an issue for those festivals. So, uh, from from my perspective, um, you know I I want to make sure that we've clearly ruled out that are you know using the infill part of that. I'm I'm fine with the steep parts and the the parts that aren't usable for parking, but but I don't want to see the. Uh, the peninsula used. So I, I don't know if you got clear enough direction around there. Yeah. But, and again, if I lose that, I lose that. But I, I just want to make it clear that I was. So I mean, I think that's worth comments for the table as well. So, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, I don't know if any Mr. Berta or Councilor Berta have anything else you want to add to that. I mean, I, I think it's important that we figure this out, right? And, and uh, you know, is there enough space? Enough speed of CAO here. Is there enough space to do something along the along the let's call it cliff sides, for lack of a better say, is there any give you the space you're looking for for this, or is this? Not adequate. I don't know. Well, I think with, I think with respect to uh, under education, certainly if you're in uh, other than yes, that's a good location. If there's concerns about other locations, with the other location, we we, we will look to adjust, but we find a, a more suitable location. So, so, so there, there, there's there's problem. There's probably several, but one thing we certainly want to do in this initial year is we need that education. We want to offer that. Well, I mean, and like I said before, I, I trust you. If there's a uh, a third ideal location, I guess that's not an idea. I trust the agreement to staff for sure on that. I agree with the, with the chair and the CAO. We're going to start at a small one. We're going to start at the library. It's a perfect spot. Nothing saying we can't expand next year or the year after the other spots. Yeah, I think we have to do two spots, right? We have to do two spots. Well, yeah, we, right now. Well, we, we, we submitted a particular size for area. So, so I certainly want to do that. Uh, and, uh, the second location, we can find that location. I don't want to believe you, but it kind of coincides with Haiti as well, doesn't it? Nice, kind of oh, like with most, like with, like, don't they kind of work? So, I mean, not to say that because we certainly haven't discussed that part, and this may complicate trying to find a location, but if there is a beekeeper and we have uh, land that's available to it, it would help support 
you know, fucking, fucking ace and quality. I mean, it's, it's all kind of part of that sort of. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been following the, uh, the call and uh, we'll, 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 we'll see what the next week or so, so we'll have to see what the next week or so. Yeah. Uh, through the chair, is there any ecological difference from the site for butterflies that occur living by water more than by the water? Yeah. Right. It's not an all in for areas where you can see and crack, so I can put that for or for the best. I don't think it's really that contributing. But I, I, I really, uh, I'm not uh, knowledgeable with this fact. Yes. I, I, I just made up. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so uh, we do have enough reaction for you there that we'll, we'll look for the suitable locations to do this with. Okay, with that. I'm sure they select the stuff. So, no, I know, I know. I just I just know that you had that you read about this. Yeah, we are, so, yeah. We are fair enough. Firmly in the weeds from this entire, <laughs> this entire meeting tonight. All right. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna move on to number six, six C uh, number two, which is a discussion on the waterfront, like the waterfront use update. Uh, is this uh, CAO or is this back to this DC? <laughs> yeah. But just to follow up on the April meeting where we have two uh, delegations, uh, the same as the principles of the model chapter in the Trans uh, Island chapter, and have some follow up with us. Uh, I do hope you will find uh, have sort of a sample template sign that they're, they're recommending that this uh, could, be, could, could be put up as part of the start of Asian Way in the Trans area. We also extended to that uh, to put out another site. And one of the items that's not mentioned within the uh, within the report that was raised by a member of the uh, uh, staff was that uh, we should ensure that uh, the signs are in both official languages and uh, with respect to that. Uh, so that was one of my, one of my notes. But, uh, the reality of the, uh, the comments and feedback uh, that we had was after the uh, meeting was produced. So I'll bring that to the floor now. And just sort of looking for any additional feedback that the committee may have on there. And then just sort of follow up uh, with respect to the uh, hit for the bomb launch and uh, for proposing that uh, we put, put, put together a survey. And, with respect to where they did the use and get uh, that educational piece uh, there, and then maybe some consideration to uh, instituting the opportunity for the Vermont and the other particular areas. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Uh, all right, thank you very much, Mr. CEO. Uh, all right, so on to discussion on this one. Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Marco. Ms. Marco. I uh, like all of this, it's been great. And I'd love to see a welcome down the first card on okay, on that sign somewhere. Otherwise, yeah, it was great. I don't want to collect the information and get that. That's a good start. Thank you. Thanks for my time. I'm sorry. The other guy. I'm sorry. Counts the mail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like the idea of the sign, but you can really tell that we are Canadian because every word is please, 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 please. We definitely don't want them overnight parking. So uh, I don't know where you put in front of them, the same as litter. You don't want them to litter. So maybe you can put the please ones at the bottom. Like respect the posted, posted speed limit. It's like going drive down the highway and you see a yellow sign that says 20 kilometers an hour. You don't have to go 20 kilometers an hour. It's when it's white. Everybody knows that, so they won't abide by it. I do a lot of signs where you got to load up, but I just think it would be 
too nice myself personally. I mean, people are just going to read it. Over. I mean, if you know, you've been around as long as I have, and Dave has, and you'll know how to be Thank you very much, Chancellor. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, yeah, I uh, I love the diver's sign, and uh, I haven't got a problem with any of that. Please, please. I mean, it, these guys are really working hard, both official and we just I agree. Uh, I think it's uh, whatever we can do. I don't know where this survey came from, though. I'm a little lost in the sample survey. Um, I thought, and I could be way out but I thought we we brought this up. Uh, I've been bringing it up for three years now, but I thought we had the direction to, we want to charge, so we want staff to give us uh, some kind of mechanism of how we can collect the money. I didn't understand. I, I didn't realize we're having a sample survey or we want to put out a survey. So I'm a, I'm a little I'm a little lost on that sample survey because I thought that's what it was. Our director was to get people uh, where they said on our last interview, on our last uh, discussion at the uh, approval of the last agenda, it says in the agenda that citywide can do this. Or whatever. So I'm, I'm just a little lost in the survey. Sure, no, I, I want I want to get action. I, yeah. You know, I you know, there's a get again. What shelf are we going to put this survey on? Yeah, and I thought we'd be you know, just you know ask for options. But so uh, to the CAO, uh, did did we mess up the ask? I mean, you know, I thought the ask. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to you, you want to be a judge. Um, it, 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 is that an option? Yes, it is an option. Um, one of the one, one of the items that uh, I guess I'm proposing the survey to use it as a education piece for shadowing instead of um, individuals arriving at a boat launch. And what we're going to have to pay fees. Um, so, so that, that, that's, that, 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 that's really the long, that's the long and short of it. Uh, we're looking at a, bit, a, a different option for that education piece. It signals it well enough in advance um, that, that that's being looked at. But, um, Committee and, and, and council that they so desire to implement a, uh, a, a fee. And, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a voter, so I don't know if they come prepared with, with their uh, debit cards uh, when they go on the uh, on, on, on the water or not. Um, so I just was looking at it uh, at the perspective of the office. That's not really where that came, uh, came from, uh, but as far as the ability to, uh, to, to implement a charge, yeah, we have to do a new system that can be. Um. <clears throat> so we did do it. Do we have it in place by this Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is the wrong meeting. We were going to discuss it. Said, no, I'm only kidding. So we, we can't do it. Let's see why. You do it with why, or you could you could do it. So the press is on. We just talk about the name the line comes in. That we go into the pay there. However. I'm just not sure how you get that educational piece out to the individuals. Uh, that, that's what I'm just looking at. That. It's uh, using the season as an education component. Yeah. Getting, getting, getting some feedback. That. Okay. I guess I was also looking at the, 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 uh, uh, some of the feedback at, from, from, from the staff perspective. Probably won't be positive when they. I mean, yeah. I'd love to go down. I'm actually I will go down. If you prefer, you can pay me if you want. 
Well, well you don't have a, you, you don't like it or anything. <laughs> oh, I don't like being parking at all. But... Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Uh, so my, so two concerns with the sign. I love the sign. I think obviously English and French. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the issues that have been raised mostly concern uh, license plates from out of province. So I think there's a necessity, uh, you know, that they be in both, both official, official languages. Um, my question is how big are the signs? Like, are we talking the size of that TV or are we talking like the size of this? Like it, it's, you know, I think a lot of it, no, I'm, I'm, I mean, there's a bit of sarcasm there, but I mean, is it something that they're actually going to notice on the way by or, or, you know, is it going to be substantive enough that, that we get the message across? I'd say change room doesn't need to be as large as the one that you're that, that, as you're entering in the area, but you're you're, you're correct. Like it, you know, it's, it's going to be much larger than the iPad that's on the table. But we haven't we haven't discussed the exact size and in, in placement of that, but I understand. Yeah. It's hard to read them when you're driving 50 kilometers now. I just want to make sure that they're like, you know, what is it? What is it? Well, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, that, that's my concern. My only other concern is that it's an SOS sign, um, not not an Edwardsburg Cardinal sign. And and I really, you know, to echo, um, you know, Councillor Martel, um, I mean, I don't know, again, and it's the same thing that I'm going to say about leasing the boat launch, but I don't know how we how we police this. Um, but I think that this is a great and a fantastic start to try to address resident concerns and uh, not limit use. So I think it's a, a great beginning, but I want it to be just not a diver initiative. I want it to be recognized that it's a council initiative. And a township initiative as well. So for me, I would like to see our name on there somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. We'll, we'll okay. And then, uh, if I may, uh, just because there's two parts to this discussion, right? Yep. So one is the survey. So I 100% I uh, support charging at the boat launch. I think now is the time. Um, you know, I have no issue, um, and I and I know that staff has to take the heat as well. They'll get the phone calls. We'll get the phone calls as well. I'm certainly fine with taking my my share of whatever whatever that is. I I think as we continue to make investments uh, in that waterfront, um, more and more people will will take advantage of that. We want to continue investing back in it. With I know it's not going to raise a ton of money. Um, but if we get, even if we get five or ten thousand dollars to continue to put towards, you know, maintenance of docks and making improvements in that area every year, uh, at a minimal cost to us to do those, then then I, you know, it's something that we have to do. Um, and certainly for for non-residents, you know, the the thought that somebody's going to come down this weekend from, you know, North Bay or from Ottawa and and you know. You, you know, drive down to to use the fantastic uh, walleye fishery that we have, uh, and use a boat launch that's provided to them uh, free of, and and no charge. Um, you know, from a resident standpoint, you know, I, I think a small charge, but for for an out of towner, uh, they're going to pay wherever they go to launch that boat uh, anywhere around us. I think it's time that that they pay to use our launch, especially if we're going to have an expectation to maintain it and keep it at a really high level. I think that that's the responsibility of those using it uh, to to pay for those things, not uh, the folks that that don't don't use them. So, um, my my only concern, um, having said that, is we really don't have the policy in place for it. Um, we don't, you know, have any idea how we're going to police it, even if we do put something in place, and we certainly don't know what the repercussions. Um, you know, so what if I don't pay the pay the ten bucks, right? Let's like, is there a fine? Is there a fee? Like, are you going to tell me? Like, what's the, until we know those sort of things, I, it's pretty hard to put, to put anything uh, in place. I too like the citywide idea, but I love our burn permit system. I have to say that 
getting that email that tells me that it's time to pay my 10 bucks. I go on, I don't even think about it. I click the renew my permit thing. And if we have that same thing for a boat launch every single year for every single person that, that comes and uses that launch, uh, where they just, you know, it's that same system, it's automated reminder. We've done fantastically well uh, with our burn permits. We've heard that so many times. Um, since we've implemented that system, I think that having a boat launch system that's very similar to that only makes sense. Mr. Dobie? I'm just going to comment on the sign. I think the sign is will be the first step, but I think that to you know, make the sign like big enough that everybody can see it. Just want to make a little tablet size. Um, as far as the survey and the collection, I'm just not going to comment on that because if you guys have batted around for three years and haven't come up with any idea in that yet, I don't think I can help you on this one because I'm like the mayor. It's going to be difficult to put into place and extremely difficult for me. We all need to get your heads together. Please come up with it. Okay, thank you much. Um, I think the sign is great, other than, yeah, furnishing English. And um, in terms of the permit, I like the idea of, of having a one stop shopping kind of option for everybody. Um, so if they're coming out of town and they're only using it two, three times a year, they're paying whatever, $20 or whatever you decide the fee is for them to launch their boats. Um, for residents who may use it more often who live here are still only paying that same amount of money. That's, you know, because I think it would be very difficult to charge each time somebody puts their boat in the water with the event we have here. You have that somebody down there all the time. You know, I've seen it in, in places like Windsor and that where they do have an attendant down there and you pay it to launch your boat, park your vehicle, and whatever for a certain amount of time. But unless you're willing to employ people to be down there, I don't know how you how else you're going to do that. Which is an option too, if you want to employ students. You know? Thank you very much. Yeah, I thought I had the big win by talking about the bilingual sign. So I was going to throw. Anyways, I guess that's uh, who knows. And anyways, I do think we can, we have done that for sure. Was it third? You sure did. It is right here. I think that's my my notes. Anyways, so uh, I, I think that's an important factor. We have to make sure we do that. And also speaking still about the sign, you know, I think it's a pretty important message that we talk about as well. The uh, the bottom part of that, the let's all work together so that we can continue to enjoy this amazing thing. I think that should be bold. It should be really highlighted as well because, you know, we are trying to figure out how we can, you know, work together so that we, we don't have to be, you know, uh, punitive, if you will, around the area or, or figure out how to do something differently so that we can, uh, you know, have, have revenue generated so that we can have staff, unfortunately, have to take care of the site on our own or whatever other mechanisms were out there. So uh, I think it's an important statement that we got to make sure that this is getting sold to people and it's, it's being clear. That's that's the message we're trying to uh, trying to help make sure we don't have to change things too drastically. So so please obey these rules. Um, I you know I I mean I I think I said it before previous as well in all of our discussions that you know uh, not a fan of parking was to the mayor's point and then Kanko parking pardon me uh, is is not something I want and uh, but you know if it's a reality it's a reality but I I do not want to see us necessarily do something uh, without knowing what the implication is going to be. So I I mean I personally think we need to get a baseline. So that we know, you know, next year, you know, when and if the numbers come down, that we that we have, you know, we have some to compare that to. Because I mean, I think it's not just a matter of revenue for for down there in the area, but I think it's also going to impact businesses potentially if we uh, if we put something in place that that does make people not want to go down to that area or makes us not unique around the other. I know we talked about other ports around here, other uh, other boat launches having. And and so maybe we get more traffic because we don't have that. And so my concern is that we that we mess up that, and it's like then they'll go to your or whoever else because now we're we're doing the same as everybody else is. So that that takes you know um, they, they can then go closer to home because there's no savings for them. So that's kind of my concerns on that. Um, uh, but if we did have to do something, I mean anything that's electronic, I don't want to have to put a machine down there that things can vandalize. And uh, 
And then as far as the enforcement goes, I suspect that that's going to be what eats up the cost of the revenue we get from it anyway. So, but again, I don't know because we don't have the data to support any of them. That's my thought, but anyways. So uh, what do we need to do here? This is just for information as well, right? So discussion. So <laughs> I don't think you got anything concise there uh, uh, yet, Mr. CEO, right? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think they certainly have for the signage. We were talking about the official from mechanism for the uh, logo on that sign and then uh, potentially uh, the Canadian holding that uh, working together. I think it's certainly have not been back to the bottom. Sorry, I don't have a number of will for the survey itself, you mean? So Sorry, I, I'm sorry, I should have said that, that I thought the survey was a good idea, personally, as well as the whole one year to trial it out. But I mean, I think that's maybe a discussion that we should, that we have to have, obviously, right? Continue on. So, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, from the perspective of purely the uh, uh, the survey and weight versus the, uh, uh, the, the pay now, I guess those are the two options on the table that we're looking at. So uh, I'm going to look back to Councilor Martel for any uh, uh, your opinion on that, where you want to go with it. I do not see any issue at all with this survey. You know, we put it, we put it on the website, even if nothing comes from it this year, the word is out there. You know, you see it looking at this, and at some point there's going to be, you know, fees for parking down there. When we talk about fees, you know, comparing them to the burn permits is great, but there are always going to be people in this for cardinal with burn without a burn permit. We can't any anything we implement that we have to police is always going to be people that just ignore it. That's is it part do we say, hey, we're still going to do this because ten percent of the people will ignore it, or do we say, hey, we're going to do this because thirty percent of the people might actually do it? You know, something is better than nothing, and what's nothing is nothing. Other questions ago? Okay, Mr. Smith. Well, I, I guess you can put it in the survey if you like. Uh, you, everybody's concerned about policing it. Uh, my concern is why don't we send someone to other areas? Because we are the only boat ramp that doesn't charge. Yeah. So, yeah. how do the other two communities serve? How are they solutions? How, what kind of mechanism do they have to pay? Because I, and I'm a voter and I'm in water everywhere, and it doesn't matter where I go, you got to pay. So, as for people coming, oh, I didn't bring my wallet. You don't usually go fishing a wallet. You got your buddy with you. Let him pay for it. Somebody's got the wallet when you try to carry it away. So, so on this side of the fence, for instance, survey, survey now and then do later or do now? And you're going with? Um, if you want to send the survey, well, it doesn't look like we're going to get it done. So, we might as well just go with the survey and then see what happens. Okay. All right. Deputy Mayor, I think I know your opinion. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> not another one on the shelf. No, I'm not putting that on the shelf. I, I think you guys are missing it. First of all, everyone else is, runs it with, with with their students. Okay, that's number one. Number two, we're looking at five dollars or less or whatever. We're going to put the survey on, and the people from Bancroft, I'm sure they're not going to go this week and look on the survey. They're on our website. See. If they're going to charge, they're going to be down on their wall line. Um, they're, they have $100,000 boats. They don't have $10 boats. They have $100,000 bass boats and $150,000 cubs. And they stay there three and four days at a time, some of them, maybe a week with their truck or car. Um, somebody, I mean, somebody's got to give me a reason why we shouldn't charge, a, a, like a good reason. Because, I mean, I don't mind. You don't want to charge some people with hundred thousand dollar boats. Then I like to put a motion through that all children that live in Edwardsburg Cardinal Township do not pay minor hockey registration for self-grammar next year. 
Okay, as long as you can put that to the motion. Uh, so, I mean, you, the you know, if you, if, if, you, if you think that we're nickel and diamond, you know, $100,000 votes, people, you, someone's got to go down there maybe. And I think it'd be a good time this Saturday just to see what it's like to be down there, maybe from midnight on and see. And you might get a better perspective of where we should be going. That's my thing. And like I said, I'm all for it. You don't want to charge hundred thousand dollars for both people. Let's not charge it. Kids in final markets. Well, well, I echo some of those comments. Um, <laughs> maybe not the minor hockey ones. Um, but I but I certainly like I'm not, I think if we want to give information and education, I'm not sure that it requires a certain it requires a notice. We're gonna start charging. Asking somebody if we want to start paired with chair, I know what the answer is going to be. No, <laughs> I mean, I uh, and maybe I'd be surprised, but but I think, but I think if somebody gave me you know a piece of information on the windshield that said, you know, your last free parking or your last free use of the boat launch, then I've got the information. I know that there's going to be a future fee implemented. If there's a survey on there that asks me if I think I should pay, <laughs> I can tell you that it's going to be a different, a different reply. So, so for me, while I'm, you know, certainly supportive of data and information, I think I get the 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 gist around the table that the group is very supportive of putting the fee in for for use of the boat launch. Um, I'm not really sure that I need more data to tell me that what people support. I, I mean. I don't remember doing a, a, no, a notification fee when we did the firm permit either. It got bylawed and got put into place and you can't have a fire without a permit. It's that simple. So I don't see I don't see how asking a group is going to make a difference. I, re I really don't. I mean, it's it, sometimes you got to make difficult choices. We were put here to, to make difficult choices and, and do things and, you know, Take the heat when the heat comes, and I mean, I'm certainly uh, willing to stand up and take my share of it for this. I want to continue to invest in this area. I want to continue to make and grow and make this area better, and it's something we're proud of. And to me, that comes with the user fee. We've heard everyone say that you can't use a boat launch around us without paying the fee for it. I mean, so why not? I think I think it makes perfect sense, but I, I don't understand how a survey helps us come to that conclusion. We've already made the decision in my mind that we're going to charge. So let's inform people that we're going to charge and when that charge is going to start. If that's not till next year, so be it. Um, but I don't think that surveying people is going to get us where, where we need to be. We've made the decision, tell them we're going to charge and move on. Like that. Then it gives us a year to figure it out. Mr. Doggy. I got no comment. Well, and I was just going to say, instead of surveying or asking, you know, educate, we are going to start charging, this is what we're going to start charging, and this is what the money is going to go towards, right? It's going to go towards maintaining the boat launches, it's going to go towards, I don't know, maintaining the road that goes down to the boat launch, or whatever the money is going to be used for, I would imagine it would be related to, to that, so... So I think it's more of people don't mind paying the fee when they know that their money is going towards something that's going to better their community or better the area that they're going to use. So I think if you take that approach, it would be taken better by the community. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I don't know. I, I took this Mr. 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 I did with the, the mayor back in Kingdom Hall. Just like the sign we have, what we want to put up at the other end, why we put one on the boat ramp that as of such and such a date, the fuel will be charged to use the boat ramp and the money will be going towards whatever. So oh, to the waterfront. Yep, yeah, fair. And it sounds like um, you're in the swing position at this point in time anyway. So it would be your date, I guess. Would it be this year or next year? No, I don't think it'd be this year, no. But, I mean, we're, we're just never done. We might have a test one at the end of the year to see. You know, but we'll never. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I, I personally, I still think, you know, I, I'd like the data, but, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be this exact regular survey. 
I don't have to have that, but uh, you know, fair enough. I would love to have that. After. You know, well, you're not going to get that because you're not going to know the before of us, right? So, well, you know, you will not know. Yeah. We will my not dad, know. my dad, it would be sort of just second. I would just like, we would not know what the beforehand looks like. We would not know what traffic we had before they did this, and then after we had that, to see if there was in fact a drop. Because don't forget, it's not just affecting the people, the, the, the township dollars itself down at the port for revenue, or sorry, down at the uh, at the uh, Legion Way for at the docks for the for the township, but it's also affecting the businesses in the area who may get less traffic. If in fact people say, you know what, now that Edward Edwards with Cardinal is charging down there at Cardinal, I'm actually going to go to Morris for a very good quality of That's all I'm saying. So we will not have that baseline data. <laughs> they yes, have, they don't have I have to uh, disagree with you because <laughs> I'm in the, I'm in the water every yeah. week and it's two, three times through the week. Yep. And I have people coming up and saying they can't believe that we don't get it. And uh, if you're going to Iroquois coming to ours because it's free, you're going to fuel up an Iroquois. Because their gas is just as cheap as ours, if not more or less, rather. So, anyways, yeah. as like I use it constantly. Like no, I, and, and, I mean, I realize that on the, on the on the idea of paying for parking, I'm on the losing end of this, and I'm okay with that. I'm just, you know, it is what it is. But so, you know, from a direction perspective, it sounds like uh, uh, we want to pick a date essentially as the mayor's put maybe it is January 1st next year for us to start. I don't. I, I, I think I take issue with paying for parking because I don't, if I go down there and park, I'm not going to pay. No, so no, right? the paying leaves the lodge. So, no. so the inference that you're paying for parking is, isn't right. I can go down there and park my car and go for a walk and not pay. I think you're saying, so, well, I know it's, it's a launch, it's but a launch if, fee, yeah, but right? if we were to go back three or four topics, times we talked about this topic, we were talking about from Stern to Gudgeon all the way down past the Legion, we we're talking about paying for parking down there. That was the original ask, and I know we've now settled on no. for vote no. which I guarantee you we did. We went through this conversation. This year, those, those people can pay too, just as well. Those people up there, there. no, up at the far end, the scuba dive. Yeah, that's not an issue. But people in the park, right? So, so I don't think we, that's what I'm saying is, I don't think we have that solidified yet. But anyway, yeah. so. I think we I'm have sure this has gotten clear for you somehow, Mr. CAO. I think we have a long fee solidified. And I, I think that that's that's clear. But it, I just want to be clear that it's not parking. No. no. Right. If, if you go down and you park there and you go fishing, right, that's, that's a different story than if you launch your boat. We're not talking about the boat. So with a misunderstanding there, then then that's not. I thought it was pretty clear that it was a fee to launch your boat, not a fee to to park your car. That doesn't matter. I mean, like I said, that was. No, I'm saying it doesn't matter to me. It's fine. If it's, if it's not a parking fee, that's fine. So you can still go to the Legion and not park your boat and, and not have to pay it, is what I'm hearing. So that's fair. Yeah. So it uh, sounds like we should probably have a, a, a decision like discussion at some point down the road on this one, then. Unless you need something else. So you sure should bring everything up. Yeah. Next meeting. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, so maybe at the next TBC yeah. we'll have a discussion on what a fee would look like and a timeline to start. So I'm sorry, the chair told the committee that she would pay one staff report. I I believe that's the ask. Yeah, I mean I think that uh, the survey uh, doesn't seem to have support. I, mean, I don't think, anyways. Uh, um, I think that the consensus around the table uh, is that it's it's not a if but a when and, and a how much uh, if I'm not mistaken and please anybody jump in if I'm not saying that correctly so I think uh, you know it sounds like we should have a discussion on, on some of those details and trying to hash that out at some point uh, at the beginning of the next meeting. Is that fair? Yeah. Reasonable? Mm -hmm. Okay so I think that's our direction there. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So moving on to uh, number seven, then inquiries, notices of motion. Mr. Deputy Mayor, do you have anything? Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, do the chair to the CEO. I'm just wondering if you could get to uh, maybe Mr. Barrett's office and ask him if he could help us out of getting a new sign down at our boat launch, uh, Canada Customs and Revenue agency, you can't read it. I mean, it's an eyesore. We're trying to improve our, our downtown or 
our waterfront, we got a we got an eyesore for the sign from the federal government. So I wonder if we could see what Mr. Bear could do for us and have him on. Maybe we can. I'm not sure. Only the agency and ask them if they could put a new sign up for us. Okay. Thank you so much. Just give her that answers now. Mr. Rajon, Mr. Dope. Okay. Well, we good. All right. And I don't have anything either then. Uh all right. Oh, Moving on to uh, number eight, which is question period. Uh, we, we still have our friends from uh, from HB here in the, uh, in the audience. Uh, you have a question or? No, we were just listening. Perfect. That's <laughs> good. I hope we were entertaining for you. <laughs> when can we start? Um, ooh, I think we have an answer for that question just yet, do we? Or do 15 we? minutes. That's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's great. So they can see the reference to your to enter into the for two months after the meeting is March 29th, um, Thank you. 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 Um, the mayor, um, on what do you mean is uh, it just like one month to us and I was on the street and we're we're working as farms and you want to get rid of the things before they close. So it's it's been it's been several years and we've done everything that's been required of us and we've been really pushing it. Yeah, and so we're moving it so yeah. Uh, sure, yeah, I was going to say there's something, but there's still something to do with the septic, I thought, first as well. But, uh, yeah. So do we, do we, do we have, do they, so basically with the recommendation we passed tonight, do we have a bylaw written then in advance? Is it ready to go for that? Like for me to sign and to, to execute? Or do you have to still write it? <laughs> so it'll take some time, time to do it. My suggestion was we're going to have a special meeting of council next Monday night at 6. I don't think this is going to require further discussion. Uh, um, maybe I'm wrong in thinking that. Um, I was going to make a suggestion if it could be done for next Monday night, why not have it on there if it's just a simple, if we had the discussion tonight, if it's a simple discussion. If it's not going to be a simple discussion, then it warrants a lot more discussion. Um, but I didn't get the impression that that it would. Um, and as long as the compliance is there, then, then I don't want to make too much. Oh, sure. It's, um, I am just meeting this person. There's a bylaw himself. Don't do. So potentially, we could see it next. Potentially, we could see it next. So, any other questions? That's good. All right. Uh, moving on to number nine, then closed session. Uh, seeing there's none there, we'll, we'll move on past that. And so I need a uh, move so for agenda. Moved by the deputy mayor, seconded by the mayor. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. All great. Thank you. I was going to get into free and occupy. Just put it forward. <laughs> 